I've listened to you. I've gotten to know you for you know, a while, and I think you're a pedophile. I think that the best positions that you can find, they, they usually resolve or result from tension from both sides. Can't really look to the right for good answers because on that side, they seem to reject the science related to trans people. That there is like this, um, I wish I could remember it, some the ba like some base part of the brain or the brain stem, like you can measure these parts and in trans women, um, so men who identify as women, they will have, I believe that external validation is really important. Like I need to be able to- I talked to my- Yeah? I talked to my girlfriend out of taking testosterone when we first met. Okay. If you were to wake up tomorrow as a woman with boobs and a vagina and you had a woman's body or whatever, would you be like, okay with that or? I'd be okay with it, but you know, I'm a freak. If I had to be gay, I could be gay. Okay. I would go down on Keanu Reeves. I didn't know that about myself, but the more I've thought about it and the more it's like, I, I get it now. Okay. So I've definitely become gayer. Are we going to get this thing figured out? What? Wait, what are we figuring out? The gender, the, the trans thing. Oh. I, well, I guess that's what we're talking about, right? That's what we're here to do. Sure. Uh, or should you want to do you want to get to know each other first before we dive in? Well, how do, how does this normally go? Kind of... Well, we we can do I... whatever you want. Who are introduce yourself so people know who they are or who you are, where to find you, all that good stuff. I'm Mr. Girl, uh, Mr. Girl on YouTube. dot com slash Mr. Girl. I talk about politics and stuff. I have some rap videos. Um, you might have seen my, my infamous cuties review, and uh, uh, I, I guess the point of my channel is to get people to understand each other across party lines and uh, to empathize with each other more and, and hate each other less. That's the goal. Cool. Okay. Those are some noble goals. I kind of do that, but I'm also pretty inflammatory when I do it, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that. Uh-huh. Well, um, yeah. What do you want to chat about today? Or what did you see of mine that you were like, oh, I need to talk to this guy and set him straight on this thing? Um, the, okay, so I, I, I watched your, uh, debating a stubborn conservative about, uh, gender mm -hmm. video. And, um, it feels like you're, uh, you're, you're obviously very smart. So, and, and you're able to kind of fend off, um, all of the different camps. Like there's the cancel culture, uh, you have to agree with us or we're going to kill you group mm -hmm. that uh, you're pretty good at pushing them away. And then there's the conservative, uh, this is a mental disorder. This is all nonsense group. And then I think turfs and it, it just listening to you talk about it. It seems like you're kind of like in the middle and, um, kind of, kind of pushing everybody away, uh, defending yourself like zombies. Okay. I don't um, think I like, I don't like the term in the middle there. I think I have like a pretty firm position staked out on one point in, uh, when it comes to trans people, but, uh, and but yet I, you're and surrounded, you're surrounded all the same. True. Yeah. So, uh, right. So yeah, yeah. Your, your, your position is, as I understand it, mm -hmm. that, um, the APA is saying that it's not a mental disorder now mm -hmm. and you are adopting their stance because we need to have a central, uh, the definition agency of some kind. Um, sure. The, that we use diagnoses as, uh, I guess, for their utility. Mm -hmm. And so there's no utility in calling it a mental illness. We use definitions of words for the utility. So there is utility in calling trans women women. I don't know if I defend that one, I don't, but it depends on the conversation I've had, I guess. But yeah, I, I feel like that's a big muddying of the waters. I don't like it when people. Uh, you don't like the semantics. Well, because it's if trans women are women, it seems like we're erasing a lot of the problems that trans people have, and it's just kind of a nonsense statement. Because well, if we have the term trans women and they're women, I, it's basically it's trying to say like it's trying to get rid of like all of the gender disparity between trans women and women, and just to bring them all, have them all be treated the same. But for some reasons, that can't be true. And then it also is just like a very like muddying the, the water statement. I just don't. It like makes it but. so you can no longer talk about trans issues. Kind of. If that's, yeah. If it's literally the truth, then you then there's no way to talk about trans women because they don't exist anymore yeah kind of and it just and I, everybody obviously well if trans women are women then why do trans women have any problems they're just women right but obviously there's more to it than that i just think it's a really reductive silly statement but i don't know how important that is to this conversation um and uh and and i remember him saying that if you if you were in the 60s 
when it, when uh, the DSM was saying that being gay was a mental illness, then you would have agreed. Then. Um, if I was in the First 60s, time actually. Um, hey, whoa, guys, guys, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're on YouTube right now, we're trying desperately, okay? August is getting fired if I don't hit 400,000 subs by the first. So if you like August editing, if you like my editor, okay? You better subscribe and hit the bell, okay? I need 4,000 subs, guys, in 10 days, all right? 10 days. Can you guys do it? Can you handle it? Based, based on the way you're saying, like, the APA decides, and I, and I accept their definition. Um, so, the, okay, so there's two parts to this. So, one, if I'm being intellectually honest, like, it's kind of like asking me, like, well, in the 1700s, would you, would you have been racist? I mean, like, honestly, probably, right? It would be nice. It's like, well, no, I think I stand as a beacon of, like, objective morality. I don't believe in any kind of relativism. I think that I would be able to make these moral statements regardless of time and place. But I, probably I'm going to be a slave to the times at some point. Okay, but if you knew what you knew now in the 60s, you'd say being gay is wrong. Um, no, I don't think so. So, oh, you're sorry, you'd, you'd say being gay is not wrong. You'd yeah, yeah, say yeah, you're no, wrong yeah, no, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. So um, <clears throat> I think that the APA statement on whether or not being a trans person is an illness in and of itself, I think is consistent with how we define what an illness is in terms of like a mental illness and then how we deal with a mental illness. Um, so to expand on that, um, if you are simply a trans person, you don't necessarily have any negative aspects of that influencing your life. So like, I think the big ones are usually like, are you able to maintain relationships? Are you able to work a job? Do you take care of yourself? Can you maintain a schedule? Like things like this to see if like, is this like an illness? Is this affecting you in a negative way? Um, now going by those criteria, I don't know why homosexuality or gayness was ever considered a mental illness. I'd have to go back and look at like at why the um, AMA or the well, APA I, I guess did it, but yeah, that's all right. I guess I think that at, um, we define mental illnesses mm -hmm. when you're acting in a way the rest of us don't like. And if you're acting in a way, so it's say, say like narcissistic personality disorder. Mm -hmm. So it, you could be likable. You could be a bit of an asshole. You could be a supreme asshole. And then you can be, you know what? The people in your life are so horrified by you that, um, I don't know any of them. I'm just your, you know, clinician. I'm going to diagnose you with a personality disorder. I'm saying that I, I can't stand you. They can't stand you. Society dislikes you so much that we're going to slap the uh, disorder label on you. And so I think it makes more sense if you go back to when gay people, uh, were, you know, the idea of your child being gay is like a life ruining nightmare and you're ostracized from your community then it makes more sense to use the mental illness label then. It's this kind of like tension between um, how do you want to act and how do other people want you to act? Just like it, like uh, like exhibitionism. Mm -hmm. If you walk around naked now in public, you've got a disorder. But um, if you walk around in like a bikini top now here, you don't. But, but if you met a girl who isn't like some predominantly Muslim country where you're going to get killed for walking around in a bikini top and she's still doing it, then I think it's fair to, to slap her with a disorder label. Um, I, I think that this is... Pr I think I can agree with this as like a second order removed from what we're talking about. So <clears throat> we... I'm going to connect it. Okay, yeah, sure. I, so I, 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 I'll like... I don't fully agree, but I'll tentatively agree. I'll see where we're going with it. Go for it. It's not a trap. Oh, no, I'm not saying it's a trap, but if I say I agree now, and then you say something later that builds on this. I'm not going to do that. Like, oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah I'm not trying to look at debate. I'm just saying, like, I'll agree because I'll see where we're going, but, like, I don't want to come back and disagree with this because it's not like I don't like something you say later. My, my main issue yeah, is, like, yeah. I guess, when you, when you paraphrase it as, like, or, or, or when you summarize it as, like, we say things are disorders if you act in ways that people don't like. I don't think that's necessarily true. For instance, if you're an asshole, if you're just like a jerk to people, we don't necessarily call that a disorder. Um, I think if you're an asshole to a certain extent, we do. I don't know if that's the case. Some people are like really just really mean. They're just really mean people. Well, if, I, if I come into your office and mm -hmm. I say, I, do, I say I'm divorced and I started going to therapy right after I got divorced. So if I come in and I say, I got divorced because my wife is a bitch. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, yeah, maybe she is, maybe, you know, you're mad, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I say, uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I lost my job because my boss is an asshole. Mm -hmm. 
and then I say, I got kicked out of my apartment building because my neighbor is an asshole. I think eventually the gears start turning and you're like, okay, it, it, I think there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, definitionally, if you can't maintain a job, you can't maintain your home, mm -hmm. you can't maintain family connections, um, well, th th at a certain point, you're going to say, well, listen, you've got a disorder. You, you need treatment. You need, you need to change. And partly it's that you're saying oh, these other people shouldn't have to change or they don't want to change or I don't think there's particularly anything wrong with them. Mm -hmm. And partly it's you, you saying they're not going to change. So even if you're right, um, lots of people are assholes, but you still, to be like a successful and moderately, uh, I don't know, happy person, like functional person, you have to kind of learn to get along with them. Yeah, I think this is getting closer to something that I generally would agree with, yeah. Okay, so I think... Um, can, wait, can I give one caveat and then we'll move on from there? Yeah. So the one caveat I would say is that, so um, earlier you said something that I said that is true, that I think a diagnosis only should exist to yield a utility to it. So diagnosing yeah. somebody as something that we can't change or we can't help or whatever doesn't seem to be very valuable. So if there is a society, for instance, let's say theoretically, and I don't know if this is 100% true, but let's say that your sexuality is like an immutable, unchangeable characteristic um, once you're like, we'll say 10 years old. Like if you're gay, you're gay. If you're straight, you're straight. And then boom. If there is like a society that is massively homophobic, but if like being gay is something that there is no treatment for, it seems a, it seems pointless to change to, to to diagnose that as an illness. And rather, it seems like the society should probably move in a certain direction to be more accommodating to that person. But if there is something uh, that is, I'll say either one, if it's harmful to other people, or two, if it is something that can change, then we can diagnose that problem and say, well, we should try to change this because it's either something that could be changed and it's causing you a lot of friction in your life or it's harmful to other people. And even if it is immutable, we still need to do something to contain it or, or treat it. So maybe um, I can't I depend kinda, on your son. Okay, go ahead. I see what you're saying, but mm -hmm. I think that uh, most, okay, I'd say there's a, not most, there's mm -hmm. a lot of mental illnesses that are not treatable. Um, when we, I'm gonna try to be really clear with our language. When you say mental illness, are you referring specifically like personality disorders or? Schizophrenia? Okay, so um, fuck, I have to look this up. So I'm just I'm using personality because some things are considered like uh, like I, I don't know if personality disorders are treatable. I think they're manageable, but I don't know if you can change somebody's personality. Um, schizophrenia think, is I, treatable with medication, but sure. But go ahead. I my, my point is that even if it so even if it's not treatable or if it is treatable or whatever, I I don't quite agree with you that that is the like hinging like factor that determines whether we label something an illness, even if it whether it's treatable or not, I still think there's utility in labeling someone as um, this person's going to act this way and we need to understand that. So like uh, pedophilia. Mm -hmm. if someone's a pedophile. Um, that I, I imagine there are people who have been cured and I imagine there are people who won't and can't. Mm -hmm. And I think either way, it's worth, in, at, at least in the therapist's office, saying, hey, uh, I've listened to you. I've gotten to know you for you know a while, and I think you're a pedophile. And that here's what this means. Here's what here's my advice to you going forward. And here's how how I think you should manage this. And here's how I think we as a society should manage this. I don't. I think there is still a utility in labeling somebody, even if it's not treatable. Okay, uh, we'll get to that. I guess in the conversation, go for it. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I don't know if I necessarily disagree, but we'll. I guess we'll see where this comes up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and pedophilia is another good example of um, you're behaving in a way that the rest of us just really don't like, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work, like societally, and so we need to slap a label on it. Whereas it, you know, in the past when the age of consent was like uh, much lower in the, in the early teens, then it's. I don't think it was considered a mental disorder. It was probably considered more of a like an asshole thing. Like that guy, that guy like, yeah, you want to keep him away from your niece, you know, he's, he's a weirdo. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, uh, okay, so if you're gay and you're in, you live in one of those places where they kill you if you're gay, I, I guess, I think that the def the idea that being gay is this immutable, 
um, your sexuality is this unchangeable core piece of your identity is not quite true. I think that that is somewhat of a bulwark against the um, societal pressure that you're talking about. I think that narrative gets pushed for good reason to tell people like, fuck off, like, stop, stop with the conversion therapy. Stop trying to make us conform. We, do, we don't want to. And then in response, the rest of society has kind of said, okay, you know what? Uh, it's actually not that big of a deal. We, I don't hate that you're gay now. I don't hate that you are, you know, having, you're not going to get married the way I want you to or have kids the way I want you to or whatever. And so then the tension is kind of um, diffused and then it doesn't have to be labeled a, a mental illness. But I, I think telling people, and I think this is kind of what uh, trans people are trying to do and trans rights activists is say, this is just happening. You can't change it. You can't affect it. It's just who they are. Just accept it. Stop. Let it go. And then try to defuse the tension on society's end. Okay, I think I largely agree with that, yeah. Okay. And um, so what I've, what kind of what I've come to in thinking about this and talking about it a lot is that I don't want to. I'm, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not transphobia, but it's like you're asking, maybe it is, but it's like you're asking me to change the way gay people asked people to change, like, well, just change your idea of what a normal life is. Change your idea of what a family is. Change your ideas about religion and sin and whatever mm -hmm. until they make room for us. And, like, I think probably people were like well yeah i'm not i'm i'm not actually that attached to those ideas i don't really care as much as i thought i did or as much as my grandparents did and you know they're dead so fuck it yeah being gay is fine it's not a sin whatever and like when you when you see christians get asked about this they're like yeah it's fine i don't care it's not my place to judge i don't know and like and just to completely um abandon like christianity's kind of earlier core stances of like what you're supposed to do as a Christian. They're just like, eh, wait, it's fine. Cause they just don't care. But I do about this one. I do care. It bothers me. And on top of that, um, I don't think that I don't think it's the same. I don't think, I think we're capitulating to, um, trans people. I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think trans people need to be told yes all the time and i don't i don't think that's good for them and i don't think it's good for society and i think my problem kind of overall with liberals lately is that they have a really hard time saying no and i kind of think of it the same way i think of black lives matter where um i went to a black lives matter protest which felt more like an antifa protest based just like on the the dress and the demographics of the people there, but like no one self identifies as Antifa or no one I talked to would. Um, they all said they're with Black Lives Matter and they're chanting Black Lives Matter and then they started chanting Trans Lives Matter. In the middle, uh, in the middle of like their chant, we're like marching to a police station and I'm watching, and I'm kept looking at the black people there being like, are you like, are you, what do you think of this? What are you thinking when the crowd starts chanting trans lives matter in the middle of this? I'm like why? I just feel like nobody puts their foot down and says like, Hey, um, your protests are good, but stop rioting. And with, with trans people like, yeah, put on a dress and, um, change your name and ask people to, to talk about you differently. I think that that's all fine. Like to live the way you want to live. But, um, once it starts to feel oppressive to other people, I think you have to understand that there has to be a point where other people have to say no. And I think conservatives are a bit too harsh and unkind in the way they say no, which I definitely picked up on in like the, the debate I listened to. And I, but I think liberals are way too permissive. Okay. Possibly including you. <clears throat> I'm going to try to re-summarize everything you just said. And you tell me if you feel like it's an accurate summary, summation of what you said, okay? Okay. So... <clears throat> You feel like um, sometimes when it comes to social progress, the left will kind of push on things 
and basically ask for the other side to to capitulate, to give in, and say, like, okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. And you think that over time, it's happened on some topics, so like homosexuality, where they don't really care that much, or they didn't care as much as their grandparents, so they're like, okay, fine, this is fine. Um, but yeah. you feel like at some point, it flies off the rails a little bit too much, and you're, you're getting to a point to where it's like, okay, well, the sky is green, and you need to you need to acknowledge that. And at some point, you're like, okay, well, hold on, we're it's going too far now, and I feel like we need to ground ourselves a little bit better, or this is something that I'm not willing to concede to. And you're drawing your line somewhere around this this trans issue, essentially, right? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And I yeah, so I guess that splits it up into two things, which is like one one is that I want people to be able to say no um, gracefully without getting canceled, and I think you agree with that. Um, just to be allowed to be like, you know what? I don't want to go along with this. I don't like it, and I I I I I don't. I'm not going to participate. Um, and then the other is like, is are they right? Is am I right to want to say no specifically about trans people? I, and and um, I don't. I I also don't want to say that I don't think society has to change. I think that we treat people really badly based on their gender. I think we body shame people. I think we um, do a lot of things to children that that are causing them to have gender dysphoria and with that we should stop doing that so i'm not saying that society doesn't need to change i just don't think it needs to change in the sense of okay trans women are women we're going to stop you we're going to start say pregnant people instead of pregnant women because we don't want to upset trans people um we're going to start saying that sex is non-binary and that it's a spectrum and and those i see as capitulation out of fear of the mob rather than um, progress that's actually going to help anybody. Okay. So I don't, I think as we go further into this, I'm probably not going to agree with any of your broader um, statements here. I think the okay. area of disagreement is probably going to be in the, in the particulars of like, where do we draw the line? It's probably yeah. going to be, yeah. Um, and then we okay. can go over like, how do we feel like we draw these lines or where do we figure we draw these lines, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do you want me to take it up there? I guess or yeah. Okay, sure. So, um, <clears throat> for hypothetical sake, um, if I follow your argument and if I said that I agree, theoretically, at one point, um, I'm going to broadly say the left and the right. We know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The left is going to say something like. Um, brick and plastic are the same thing and you have to agree with that and at some point yeah. i'm gonna be like okay th it's this is too much i i can't do that right there's gonna be some line that even i would draw there i would admit that or and actually i can use a real world example um i don't know if you've ever heard of like neo pronouns or like yeah yeah yeah, yeah the 15 oh, yeah. million other like autism gender and stuff like that that's being like i my, my line is there i, I just don't um <clears throat> yeah i'm not in favor of that um, okay, so you agree with it? You agree with me that there's a dynamic of the left um, annexing, uh, moving further and further, and that it is not, it is not dictated by science or logic. It is dictated by. Uh, I'm not sure what's pushing it, but I think, I think it uses I, it uses science and logic as like a springboard. And then yes, it kind of jumps off sure. into other things, yeah. So, but that's not that's not the that's not the engine, though. No, yeah, Those I, are... I agree with that. So, I think the okay. problem of what's happened is, um, uh, it, it, this isn't even related to this topic, really. But I think the problem that's happened is that as we become more and more polarized as a society, the problem isn't that the left has gotten more left and the right has gotten more right. I think the problem is that there is no more conversation that happens between these two sides, and in my opinion. Um, this is going to sound like an Omega fence sitter take, but I think that the best positions that you can find are usually, um, they, they usually resolve or result from tension from both sides that yeah. some natural tension there. Have you ever played a game called Eve? No. <laughs> okay. But I know, I know, I know what it is. I learned this while running a, a, a really big corporation in that game that if I ever want to have somebody that advocates for, for something, even if I agree with them, I always want somebody advocating on the other end. I always want somebody yeah. pushing on the other end because there might yeah. be something that I'm overlooking. Like this might be a good idea, but maybe there are a couple of things we should keep in mind. Or maybe there's like a reason why we should do it a little bit differently. That natural tension is really important. 
And as soon as that tension disappears, it's like a rubber band that snaps. It's not that it disappears and then this side gets more extreme. It's that it disappears and this side is gone into like, we went from arguing like trans people are real because we can look at scans in the brain and we can see a difference to now you can identify as wall gender and that's actually legitimate identification because all self-ID is valid and you can be anything you want to be and anybody that tells you differently is trans is like, what, what the fuck? Um, right. I, I agree that that happens. Um, okay. the, the problems that I have though, is that as much as I will rally against kind of the, the left for how insanely off they've gone, you can't, I can't really look to the right for good answers because on that side, they seem to reject the science related to trans people that there is like this, um, I wish I could remember it. Some the ba like some base part of the brain or the brain stem, like you can measure these parts and in trans women, um, so men who identify as women, they will have like these parts in their brain that resemble that of cisgender women, where, where it's like, holy shit, there's like, you're actually getting brain structures that are matching. Now, whether that's due to biology and genetics or whether that's due to some early formative experience, it's hard to say, we don't know that. Well, that's the thing mm -hmm. is that it's hard, it's hard to say what that means. For like sure. If you, so in, in my, my video about this, mm -hmm. I, I looked at similar articles that have been written about the brains of criminals have mm -hmm. similar structures. The brains of artists have similar structures. So if you get a bunch of people who are acting similarly and mm -hmm. trans women often do act like women, it's not, it, um, it's, it's a bit tautological to say they act similarly and their brains are similarly shaped. So therefore they have artist brains or they have criminal brains or they have woman brains that, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that. Well, it could mean, it could mean that, but we don't necessarily know why they are that way. Maybe. Um, or maybe you're saying that you could find other brains that fit a similar profile, but they don't have those characteristics. I'm, yeah, I guess I'm saying the framing mm -hmm. is the problem is in the framing of where, like when they looked at um, the brains of criminals, they didn't say we're trying to identify who has a crime brain. Mm -hmm. And when and so these criminals have similar structures, those are crime brains. Mm -hmm. So now anyone who has a brain with that structure also has a crime brain. That 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 framing would be weird, but we accept it more when we're saying, oh, we're looking for female brains. <laughs> because um, we just accept that there is a thing that is like um, a female brain beyond a brain literally that is, you know, has XX chromosomes. We accept in the formulation of the question that there is such a thing. But if you, if you switch it to a different topic, it becomes uh, more obvious that the, the labeling in itself is where like the leap is being made. I mean, possibly, but I mean, we can agree that like, you would agree that there are female bodies I imagine, right? And male bodies. Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. So there can probably, it, it's not a huge jump to say that there are probably female brains and male brains, right? Well, I my, I would say that mm -hmm. uh, the brain is part of the body. Of course. I, yeah. I don't, I don't differentiate between the brain and the body. This is another problem. Sure. Well, I'm just, what I'm saying is that like externally, there are f clearly male bodies and female bodies. So internally, there are probably also clearly male bodies and female bodies, whether we're talking about, well, well, yeah. I, I think, that, I think this is a bunch of horse shit. Wait, which part? You know, all of it you know why because if if you saw a trans person uh-huh yeah, a trans woman and they're like i'm a woman mm -hmm. but you know in a male body and their brain was identical to arnold schwarzenegger's brain mm -hmm. the most male brain that we have uh you wouldn't say well no actually according to your brain scan you're not trans so i don't i don't think it actually <laughs> matters that again this just feels like sure so uh, i okay I'm, so it I'm feels not, like the end that I, I understand. I know exactly what you're going to say. Okay. So yeah, I'm, okay. um, I'm, I, I don't know how, what you've heard about me or if you've only seen my one argument, you might think that I'm a certain way. So this conversation might be very, um, not as much fun for you. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be like as crazy far left as 99% of people that talk about this are. So no, no, that's there why are, I, that's yeah. why I want to talk okay. to you. I know this. So I know this about you. I will tell you that what you're saying is true. And I will say a controversial and cancelable statement that there probably are some trans people that aren't trans. They're probably confused or they have other issues and they don't realize it. Just playing well, a numbers always, game. There, there must yeah. be. Um, and I will also say that aren't straight. Sure. There's gay people for that sure. Aren't gay. There's been a, you don't you don't you can't decide what you are. Yeah, and I'll also say there probably would be some people that if you showed them, let's say there was a 100% conclusive, this is what a trans brain looks like that there would be a large section of people on the left that would say, well, just because they don't have a trans brain doesn't mean you say they can't be trans. If they want to self-ID some way, they can. Sure. Sure. So okay. I'll, okay. I'll, yeah, okay. I'll make all those concessions to you, but let me just, on the end of this, I'll make all those concessions to you, but on the end of this, unfortunately, it's not really 
possible to um, it, it's a good thought experiment, but it's not really possible in the real world to attack somebody on this front because we don't usually scan people's brains until they're dead. <laughs> like we can't like cut them open to see for yeah. yeah I'm not, I don't want to yeah. attack anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I'm I'm making a point that sure. the engine of progress, uh, science is a thing they put on the front of it that makes it break through shit more easily. Mm -hmm. But if you take the thing off, it'll keep going. It doesn't matter. And so this is what I'm saying. Like, like I'm not like a psychologist. I have a degree in psychology and I've looked at a lot of studies enough to, so that I can look at the stuff you're talking about and say like, you, like it, this doesn't necessarily, this doesn't make sense to me at least. I can't objectively say it doesn't make sense. But sure. it doesn't make sense to me for this reason, in that if, hypothetically, we we know that if we take a trans person who, every other me measurement, they're trans, mm -hmm. um, and then say, oh, but actually your brain is, is, your brain does match your body physically, that's not going to make them think they're not trans. It's not going to make their therapist think they're not trans, and it's not going to make liberals think they're not trans. So effectively, it doesn't really matter. Like it's it's some evidence, but it just feels like that's not the point, and that's not that's not what they care about. Yeah. So there are there are two separate conversations here, and I enjoy both of them, and we can have either one you want. Um, yeah. But the first one is kind of like the fact of the matter about trans people: are they real, or how should you treat them? And the I don't other think we should one, talk about that. Sure. Um, it's an interesting conversation, but, but the second one is kind of the meta narrative around trans people, or I guess we'd just say the narrative around trans people, which is um, if scientific evidence were to come out to the contrary about some of our ideas related to trans people, would people on the left be accepting of that scientific information? And I, and I would no. probably largely agree with you that the answer w would probably be no. That would, that would be my guess. And I'll, I'll even go as far as to say that if scientific evidence <laughs> uh, comes out in support of the left's narrative of trans people, it would not affect my narrative. So I don't know. Wait, why not? Or what do you mean by that? Which part of your narrative? Um, that male, that a male brain. Mm hmm. Okay. I, I, my narrative is mm -hmm. a male brain is a brain that's in a male body. There is no, I, I, to me, this is fundamentally reli a religious like concept that you can be in the wrong body. I believe that you are your body. You're no, no one's in the wrong body. You, and we're all uncomfortable in our bodies. No one likes being in their body. I like it's being a in death my body. sentence. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that sucks. You I guess. do now, but at some point, you won't like being in your body. Sure, like when I'm playing League right? of Legends. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, as you get older or things go wrong, or you get diseases, or you break things, or things get cut off, or mm -hmm. whatever, you'll, you'll start to feel like, oh, this isn't really me. And I think that's a that kind of dysmorphia is a universal experience that everybody has. Everybody pictures themselves slightly different from how they actually are, and then trans people picture themselves very differently from how they actually are. But I don't see that as a particularly unique experience. So something I'm curious about, are you familiar with the term intersex? Yes. How do you view these people then? Are they just both or? They're, they're neither. Yeah, they're intersex. So yeah, there's another problem I have. Everybody has to be male or female. And I'm like, no, a lot of people are neither. Well, like, but I mean, I, like there, there's still the binary. It's not like intersex people have like genitals that are like alien genitals or something, right? Like they're still somewhere on that. They're sexually dimorphic. They're still on that male to female yeah, line. Yeah, they're somewhere right? in between. Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Okay, I'm trying to epistemically which, which now. I'm trying to understand. Trans people aren't saying trans people. Trans people. Mm -hmm. A trans woman does not say like, "Hey, I know I'm supposed to be a man, but you know, I think I'm a little female." They say, "I am 100% female. I am just as female as you know whoever, as any woman." So I don't, I don't see how intersex. I see. I see you're trying to get at like finding the like rough edges of my 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 sharp definitions, but. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it, it's in terms of trans people and the, the narrative about them, that is not part of it. There's there, liberals are not saying trans women are a little bit more female. They're saying they're women. Sure. We, that gets into a different area. So I just kind of want to focus on this. So um, okay. let's say I'm just, so I'm just curious. I'll lay big hypotheticals. Okay? Let's say that hypothetically we had, um, we discovered there was a region of the brain and it literally has like an M or an F printed on it. This is like deep, deep, deep inside 
your yeah. pig pituitary gland or something. I don't know. So it's in there. Okay. And they find this and then they start running tests on dead trans people and they start seeing, oh my God, tr like 99% of trans women have the F stamp in their brain, even though they were born with a penis and all that. And trans men all have the M stamp, even though they were born with vaginas and ovaries and all that. Yeah. At that point, would you stop and be like, okay, maybe like female brains that expect female bodies can be born into male bodies? Or how do you view that? What does that look like in your understanding of the world, I guess? Okay, so you're, so you're saying 100% correlation and it is literally labeled. Or like a 99% But basically that we've like, we've absolutely determined there's some part in the brain that, d that determines what you well, feel like your sex should be. Yeah. I don't... Uh... Were you about to say you don't think that you don't think that any part of your brain determines like how no, you feel I as a sex? I, yeah, I don't agree with that. But you're you're asking me to accept it as the hypothetical. So uh -huh. I, I my my last question is, um, have we determined that this is a brain scan from birth? We're scanning the we're scanning babies, and then after they die, we see they they were trans throughout their whole life. But the baby's brain, it was always there. Yeah, I'm just trying to say, like, that's a scientific fact. Do, do you still accept it on, under the basis of science? Or is there, like, some... No, that would be pretty compelling, I have to say. That's a... Uh, okay, I'm just because you mentioned be... the religion thing, so I don't know how, like... It, if, like, epistemically you're valuing, like, faith-based arguments more so than, like, some sort of, like, falsifiable scientific arguments. I'm just curious on that. Um, we're a long I've... ways from what I just said, that hypothetical. I understand that's not like the world we live in today. We don't have that information, of course. Yes. Right? And so if we had that, then mm -hmm. I would say I was wrong. Sure. Okay. I w I w <laughs> that, that's pretty strong evidence. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the reason I'm saying it's religious is just the idea that of being in a body. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so then I guess what we're basically at is, is you and I both exist in a world where if we're being intellectually honest, neither of us has the answer 100%. I can't tell you that like, well, trans people are of course real and scientifically and biologically like immutable, unchangeable, like this something, right? And then if you're being honest, I don't think you can say, oh, well for sure, there's no such thing as a trans person. They just need to be like uh, changed pretty, a little bit when they're a child. I'm pretty right? sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure. Uh, I feel, I feel, I feel very sure. So how? That. I don't have the, I don't have, mm -hmm. well, you can't, I can't prove that it's not there. I can't, I can't prove that there is no M or F stamp, but mm -hmm. um, I'm sure. So then my question is going to be, um, so I believe that external validation is really important. Like I need to be able to. I talked to my. Yeah. I talked to my girlfriend out of taking testosterone when we first met. Okay. Yeah. Were we going somewhere with that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, she was. She said, "I." She said, "I'm. I'm thinking of starting a low dose of testosterone. Mm -hmm. I'm non-binary. I want you to use this nickname for me. I want you to use. Oh, this is her on my shirt. Uh, I want you to use uh, they them pronouns." And I was like, "No, I'm okay. not doing that shit." I said, "You hate women. You hate women, and that's fine. But I'm, don't expect me to participate in your self-hating misogyny. Uh, you can hate yourself. You can hate your body." I feel like, well, I, you know, maybe you haven't had the kind of like freedom to do that. It's okay. You can hate your body with, I, we, we can still date. You can hate your body. You can hate it every single time I say your name, but uh, don't take testosterone and I'm not going to call you names. I'm not going to call you by your, your masculine nickname and I'm not going to call you, uh, they, you're a girl. And, and she was like, I want you to, I want to be referred to as your partner, not your girlfriend. This was like two, maybe two weeks after we started dating. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I don't want a partner. I want a girlfriend. You're my girlfriend. I'm not doing this. Okay. Um, so the, I understand the story, but I don't. I don't know if I can go or what. So are you trying to say that like by doing this, you think you talk somebody out of being trans, so they weren't really I, trans? So you're kind of like extrapolating this to trans people in general, or? So yeah, I guess I'm saying in my experience, my experience is that you you can talk people out of being trans by making room for them as they are do you think that it might be possible that um that and i will concede i'll say that there probably are some people that think they're trans but they're having a different type of experience that they haven't identified yet but there might also be some people that are trans that there is no other experience like they they're never going to feel comfortable with their sex or gender do you think that's possible uh, no because i think that's again i think that's kind of a definitional thing like if someone is never, you don't have to be comfortable with your body. Like, I don't think that means that you should be in another body. I think it just means you hate your body. 
And like hating your body is pretty normal. Lots of people hate their body. I think I think of trans people the same way I think of like women who get breast implants. They feel that their boobs just should be bigger. And so they go make them bigger and then they either feel better or they don't feel better. Mm -hmm. But I don't that t there's no word for it though. And like I don't think we need a word for this. Uh, in the in the as like an identity, it's not an identity to want your boobs to be bigger. You just want them. Do you giving think? It a, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go I was ahead. gonna say giving it a word and a name. It just it just protects it. It's it's like I, I just see a trans person as someone who walks into a therapist's office and says, "Doc, I want to be a girl," and they have figured out. Um, and this is understandable. I don't blame trans people for any of this. How to get more and more people to say that they are the gender they want to be said that they are. Give them what they want, which is hormones and surgery and acceptance. And I, and I think they should have acceptance. I don't, I don't agree with giving trans people hormones and surgery. Um, and it's, it's just like uh, no one will say no. Do you think that it's possible, or here's a question. Do you think that there's yeah. any like internal experience of being a gender? Um, um, or maybe a more personal question, like if you were to wake up tomorrow as a woman with boobs and a vagina and you had a woman's body or whatever, would you be like okay with that or? I'd be okay with it, but you know, I'm a freak. So I don't think that. Do you think a lot of people have internal experiences related to their okay. agenda? Did I say agenda? Or I mean gender. I don't know what I just said there. Sorry. I saw you choked on your water. I got distracted. Agenda. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> I'm going to choke for another second. So say it again. Go for it. Um, do, do you think that people have um, an experience, an internal experience of a gender that's like unique from your other, like, oh, like I'm a, um, I'm a gamer. I'm an American, blah, blah, blah. Do you think people have an experience like I am a man or I'm a woman? And that's a strong internal experience that I have. Yeah, but I think it's all um, socialized m m mostly. Like the experience of being a woman uh -huh. in like in Beverly Hills is very different from the experience of being a woman in um, like Afghanistan. Sure. Like to, to the point where they're um, calling them the same gender. It almost doesn't even make sense. <clears throat> Do you think that um, even if the experience is socialized, um, it's still a pretty real and powerful thing, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think your gender is your experience of how you and others perceive the uh, sexuality of your body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's if even if it's socialized, it's still very powerful mm -hmm. and so for real to an extent. You said something earlier that I kind of agree with a little bit. It's a little controversial, but like. I'm willing to bet that there are at least parts of our um, sexual orientations that are at least somewhat socially developed. Um, if I had to be gay, I could be gay. Okay. If you're gonna put a gun in my head, say so you're gonna kill me if I. If well, I but go, to be clear, I there's a difference. A woman. Well, well, like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. To be clear, there's a big difference between like having sex to save your life versus a genuine attraction to the male body, right? I don't know. Okay, well, here, let me, okay, Th wait, that was, I, that was a rhetorical question. There absolutely is, right? When you see... I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Sure, okay, well, I, well, let me explain then. If you see, or I'm, I'm assuming, actually, and I could be wrong, if any of these don't match up with your experience, it's fine. But if you see certain things of a female body, there's, like, an innate sexual attraction to that. So, like, nice boobies, nice booties, like, these are things that, as a male, typically, typically you see it, you're like, wow, I'm getting horny, because I'm seeing things that are like, wow. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a difference between that versus like, Go on. if you're going to make me fuck a woman, I can do it, versus like just seeing... Uh, but don't you sometimes feel like that? Sure, but it's a different kind of thing. It's a different thing. But, some, but sometimes aren't you just, you know, you're like, fine. Yeah, Dude. but like there's still like a difference between... I am innately sexually excited by this particular trait versus like... The difference has eroded for me as time has gone on. I remember being like 12 and people being like, Keanu Reeves is very handsome. Mm -hmm. And me being like, I don't even know what you mean. I don't, I don't, I can't tell the difference between a handsome man and a non-handsome man. I don't know why people are like, like really, like Pierce Brosnan is attractive or Sean Connery. That was a really confusing one. People were like, Sean Connery, he was the best Bond because he was so sexy. And I was like, how is Sean Connery sexy? I don't understand. That's confusing to me. And then, like, as I got went through my teens, I was like, 
Oh yeah, I I I, I would go down on Keanu Reeves. I didn't know that about myself, but the more I've thought about it, and the more it's like I I get it now. Okay, so I've definitely become gayer as uh, exposure to like other people's sense of who's attractive has definitely made me gayer. Okay. Um, so we believe that we can socialize or you believe that you can socialize like a sexual attraction, right? Which I think I can kind of agree with. Um, but like it's easier to socialize it into existence than out of existence. Po yeah, possibly. Yeah, sure. So we can agree that we can socialize it, but, but I'm just, I'm trying to get us on the same ground that we both acknowledge that there is some underlying real thing that's happening there. Um, it's not like a sexual attraction is like any arbitrary, like, oh, tomorrow I'm just going to be sexually attracted to a woman's forehead. There, there's a difference between like these sexual body parts that we've either been socialized to find sexual or like things that are just innately like booties and boobies seem to be attractive yeah. to university men, right? Yeah. Well, whatever it is, it's, it's big and requires a lot of inertia to move it if mm -hmm. it's movable at all. Sure. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is that like, if we can have like these innate feelings that leave us attracted to what I would say are secondary sexual characteristics. So the things that our bodies tend to develop when we're in puberty, um, if we can have like an innate attraction to these things, um, could we not also have, and when I say innate, I don't mean like unchangeable gender. I just mean innate, you like mean it's a big, very deeply, just mean very huge big, part of us. Yeah. Strong. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can have those kind of innate experiences, <clears throat> could we not also have an innate like experience of our gender that's also equally like very difficult to move or maybe even impossible at a certain point in life? Like an innate attachment to those, to having those body parts rather than being attracted to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think if it were easy to move, um, if we could talk trans people out of being trans, we would just do it. I, yeah. I, or it would have been done by now. Or even... Well, yeah, go ahead. I, except I think I have done it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say if we could easily do it, I'm, I, might, I might just um, be good at it. I don't know. Do you think there's a possibility that the person that you talked out of it might not have actually been having a trans experience, but we're just a little bit like confused about like their gender that's, and everything? No, I no, no, no. I think that's tautological. You're saying if someone can be talked out of being trans and they weren't really trans, so then we're defining trans as you can't be talked out of it. And then, then I'm, then I'm like, okay, if that's your definition of trans, then there's no point in trying to treat um, mm -hmm. trans people in that way where well, not conversion therapy, but like, so I don't necessarily kind of... think it's tautological. So let's say that I've got a guy on the ground and I, and he's in extreme pain and I'm like, sir, you need to get up. We need to move. And he's like, I can't, my pelvis is broken. And I'm like, listen mm -hmm. to me, look at me. Okay. You're going to get up. You're going to start walking. Okay. We're going to get out of this mm -hmm. burning building. Okay. Now either one, his pelvis is broken, in which case he's never standing up or two, he just has like a bad tear or a bruise or muscle is hurting. And he does get up and he walks away. Just because I was able to say, okay, this guy didn't actually have a broken pelvis doesn't mean that broken pelvises aren't real. It just means that for some people, you know, maybe you can talk them through some pain because something isn't actually broken or fractured or destroyed. So I wouldn't yep. say that it's tautological that a person that you can talk out of being trans, like, oh, well, you're just saying that every person you talk out of being trans was ever trans, so you're kind of like committing well, that's it. The, yeah. That's not the part that's tautological. You're, if, the, if the pelvis is broken, it's broken, and a person, mm -hmm. person with a broken pelvis can't walk. Yeah. That, that's the tautological part where you're saying that being trans is the same as having a broken pelvis and accepting your body to some functional degree is the same as walking. And I'm saying um, that's what we're arguing about. That's, the, that's our central disagreement is that I don't mm -hmm. agree with that. Well, I, guess I agree my... a person with a broken pelvis can't walk. I don't agree that someone who is trans can't um, desist. I yeah, I guess my, my, so I guess maybe we have to build out this a little bit more. So I, I'm, I'm working on a lot of like, um, uh, how, how would I say this? If somebody comes up to me, um, and they say like, Hey, uh, I've got a way to make a quick, easy million dollars. Um, I'm in instantly skeptical for like a million different reasons. Okay. Well, if you knew how to do this, you'd already be doing it. Why are you coming to me? What are the chances that I'm the first person you report? Like this is, it doesn't sound real to me. Right. Um, I, I try to look like, where are the motivations at? Um, so for trans people, I see that these people have a very high rate of suicide compared to the normal society. And I see that even the ones that aren't suicidal, um, tend to be fucking miserable in a lot of different ways. Um, they have a huge problem integrating in society. They have huge problems with themselves. They, it's also often paired with other mental illnesses, like not good. So if it was possible that a conversation or two or three could talk a person out of being trans, it seems so much more likely that the trans community would have like discovered this, um, 
rather than not. But trans, mm -hmm. trans people don't want to stop being trans. Do you really think that's the case? Yes. Why do you think for, that? For, for the most part. Because I think, <clears throat> I guess it's definitional again, but I think being trans is a extremely overwhelming desire to become the opposite sex. Okay, I'm gonna use another analogy that I know is one, or I'm not using an analogy. Okay, so you have, um, you said a background in psychology. Have you ever heard of gay people um, expressing a desire to be straight? Have you ever, are you familiar with this like concept? Um, I mean, so, I understand the concept. Well, yeah, so well, basically what it is is you have a child that starts to go through puberty and he's starting to notice that he's having an attraction to secondary sexual characteristics of the same sex. And it is a very othery feeling because it's not what your peers are talking about. You know your family's not going to be okay with it and your friends are going to probably ostracize you as well. So rather than like saying that like, oh, I love being gay. It's awesome. I want to be gay. I want to have sex with men. The prevailing thought is like, fuck, I wish I was just normal. I hate that I'm having these feelings. Could that not be or possible with trans people? Or pedophilia. I'm um, sure pedophilia could be another example as well. Sure. But the difference is that uh, being trans is an overwhelming desire to become. Well, is, oh, wait, an overwhelming an desire for what to become? To become a woman or to become a man. Yeah, but I think the There's distinction... Desire, th so this is, this is kind of... This might be the center point of a disagreement. It's not to become a woman or a man. It's to make your body match what you think you already are. Because a trans person... My understanding is oh, I know, I know yeah. what their narrative... I know, I know the narrative of a trans person is that you believe that you already are. Oh, I, so I, mm -hmm. if I'm trans, I believe I'm already a woman. And I want to make my body match my internal experience or my brain. Mm -hmm. I understand that's, that's, that is the trans person's definition of being trans. Mm -hmm. But I, I reject that definition. Okay, well, I think... I mean, that's kind of because, like, the, that's where our disagreement is then, right? Because if I accept your rejection of that definition from there, then everything you're saying is almost deductively necessarily true, right? Yes, exactly. So if you would just do that, <laughs> this would be a lot easier. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so, so if you yeah. want to, if you, if you reject my rejection, mm -hmm. then here's how I would frame it. Mm -hmm. um, the trans person believes, um, like if I'm gay, I'm still Max. I'm just Max who wants to fuck guys, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and I and I don't and my my community doesn't want me to be Max who wants to fuck guys, and so but that that's just that's just part of me. But for it, for a trans person, they change their name, they change their looks, they change at a fucking molecular level or a cellular level at least. They want to transform their bodies. Mm -hmm. So I still think it's different in that. Um, you can, uh, I, I could be gay or I could be straight and it, it would change that part of my life and that part of me, but it's not, it's not a ho holistic alteration of my, my body and identity. Whereas I think that trans people want, um, I don't think they want to, I, I, it's, it's a desire to travel from here to here and they want to be here. You're, I mean, if to stop being trans is is easy, you just have to not do that. Yeah, but I think and then the, you won't be trans. You'll just be really uncomfortable and you'll hate yourself and like. But I think the problem is die. that like our our sexuality, or I'm sorry, our sexual orientation is only experienced in some facets of our life at some points in time, whereas yes. our like gender or sex is something that is like omnipresent. It's it's basically with you from from when you wake up to when you go to sleep and it affects every single facet of your life. If I'm yeah, gay, I, I can go into certain areas and nobody will know that I'm gay. I don't have an outward appearance about it. Nobody has to know. Whereas if I'm a man or a woman, every single part of my interaction with society will be dictated to some extent yes. on my gender expression. And if I'm- And I assume that's part of what makes it so uncomfortable. Yeah, and it's part of what means why yeah. they have to change so much. It's not just a simple thing like, oh, my orientation is a little different, you know? I think, I. Th uh, I think also when you're gay, it's not like you're so upset that like you're not having sex with man, right? Like horniness can be uncomfortable, but genuine, gener generally, you're, it's not a, a, it's not unpleasantness that is pushing you to behave sexually towards other people. I think. 
But when you're trans, it's like you're in a frying pan. And the frying pan is your own body and the reality of your own body and wanting to get out. It is it is discomfort with your own body. I think that this dysphoria that is usually propelling the actions of a trans person. So that's why I'm saying I don't think trans people really want to stop being trans because to me, if you're in the frying pan and you're not doing anything about it, then you're not trans. You just hate your body and you wish or, <clears throat> or believe that you're kind of yeah it's so diff it's different from how it should be we, and we so who wants to just sit in the frying pan and like boil yeah like, we no, just I, I, I understand what you're saying but we stumbled onto that thing earlier um where hmm. it's a very fine point but when you say they don't want to stop being trans we're bumping into that um foundational disagreement they have the where, rejection yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah are right. they because okay. in my point of view they are trans and now it's about matching the body to the mind but in your point of view, there's a whole thing and you either become trans or you aren't trans. That underlying okay, fact to, of the matter isn't already there, right? But to agree, to, but for your point, you're making a leap that I can't follow, which is that the mm -hmm. broken pelvis thing, which is that a trans person, if they can actually learn without altering their hormones or surgery, mm -hmm. Which, which, uh, which are the only two things I'm really pushing back against. I guess my main problems are um, punishing people for not referring to you the way you want them to, using surgery and using hormones. Those are the things I disagree with. Everything else about being trans, I'm, I'm on board with. Um, or everything else, I guess, about accepting uh, trans people into society or adjusting, making room for them, I guess. I'm on board with everything else. Um, but... I, I, to, the leap you're making is that if you can be calmed down and if you can realize actually you don't need to escape your gender or your body mm -hmm. um, then you weren't really trans I don't, I don't agree with that I don't think that I don't agree with your definition of trans as like you, that, that, that can't be accomplished yeah, so let me, okay, yeah. let me just put forth my, this is so that we're on the same page here, or we both understand what we're talking about. So this is my understanding right. of, of trans people, okay? And this is, what, this is this foundational bump that we're having, okay? My understanding is that we seem to have some internal experiences related to our uh, gender identity, like whether we feel like we're male or female, that there's like an internal experience that seems to exist there. Um, and some people it's very strong, and other people it's not as strong. Um, so you said something that I kind of grew there. If I woke up as a woman, I don't actually think I would care that much. I don't know if I had boobs and a butt, it's whatever. It's not like a huge part of like, I don't, I'm not super attached to being like a man. Some people seem to yeah. be very attached to their sexuality, their gender, right? So maybe this is varying from people to people, but for trans people, um, it seems as though in general, there, there is a strong internal experience of a gender, um, and if it's not matching that external expression of their gender, there is a problem there that makes them feel like they're in the wrong body in a way that like there is an internal fact of the matter about their gender experience and it is not matching their body. One of the best, um, it's just a personal example, so it doesn't, it could mean nothing. One of the best examples that I got of this was a trans person emailed me um, and they had gone off and on insurance when it came to being able to take hormones for their body. And they said that it was like, if you get acne and you look at your face, like it's gross, but when they would start hormone therapy, um, I think this was a trans man, when they would start hormone therapy and then when they would get off hormone therapy, just the way that their body would start to put on that very like feminine fat, that feminine shape and their waist and everything, when they would stop taking hormones for a while, it was like a cringing, like fingernails across the chalkboard type of experience of looking at their body in such a way that didn't match their internal feeling. Of the, of, the, of the gender that they felt they were internally. So that's the position that I'm coming from. So in, in my world, and I understand that you reject this kind of foundational argument, but in my world, the reason why everything builds out easily from this is that if there is an internal fact of the matter of your gender and you, your body doesn't match that, and that internal part, whether it's socialized or not, is really, really, really hard or almost impossible to change, then it seems like the easier part is, well, if we can't make the brain match the body, then we make the body match the brain. And that's where hormone therapy or, or gender reassignment surgery or sex, whatever stuff comes in. Yeah, gender affirming surgery. Okay. Yeah, okay, go ahead. And yeah, so, so my, the, my pushbacks against those mm -hmm. things is, is one, um, maybe we don't have to make the brain match the body. Maybe life just sucks. You know, maybe life sucks for all of us. Maybe none of our brains match our bodies to, to differing degrees. And we can't all have what we want. And um, 
the ways we think we can we're gonna get what we want are actually just gonna make us feel sad and cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, two, you're accepting as a given the extreme discomfort of your body not matching your sense of your gender while also telling me that you don't believe that would be the case for you. I don't believe it would be the case for me either. And, um, okay, have you met men who you feel like would be, or who are like super uncomfortable with being feminized in any way? Yeah, it's a really common experience for men, I would say. <laughs> okay. I, I went this, to an all boys high school, so it's a very common, like hyper masculine, like yeah, it's a very, very big thing. Yeah. I think that is kind of the same as being trans. Like the the in terms of the extreme attachment to your gender, I find that to be kind of a problem, even if your gender matches your body. I think that um I I, I don't think that's good. And I feel superior to people who feel like that. Okay, so Okay, so this is gonna get really personal now, okay? Um, okay? Wait, how old are you? I'm just curious. 36. Okay. Um, I can't give you good answers there, and I'm much younger than you. I'm only 33 years old, okay? So oh, it's possible. Oh, that's a huge, yeah, huge well, gap. So, yeah. he, so here's something that's hard to consider. Okay, sunny okay? boy. It might be the case that you are somewhat of an exceptional person. Now, when I say exceptional, I don't mean great or good. I just oh, mean like an exception. I, think, yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah. yeah. Be, so, and, uh, so I'll get personal here because there are some ways that I view life that I think are incredibly exceptional. Um, and it yeah. took me a while of having a public audience to realize, well, hold Not on. everybody thinks that way. Yeah, I have a wickedly different, the best example that I can think of is I don't have a strong attachment to my family and I've never understood people that put up with abusive family members. And anytime somebody would ask me for advice on that, like, hey, um, what is what, what would you recommend? Like my mom is like so mean around the holidays. I'm like, cut her out of your life. Why would you ever talk to her? Just stop talking to her forever. Never talk to this person again, it's so easy. Um, and it took me a long time to realize like, okay, hold on. Other people process things in such different ways. It's really, really difficult for me to to empathize with them, so I need to like engage my brain a lot to figure out like, okay, well, how do you feel about this thing? Because clearly my experience internally is not the same as yours. And I feel, it's hard to say, and it's a little presumptuous for me to say this, but I feel pretty similarly when it comes to trans people. And it's hard for me to say because I can't actually do this, but I really do feel like if I woke up tomorrow and I was a woman, I really don't think I would care. My masculinity or me being a man is, is a really minor part of my experience as a human. Now, maybe I only feel that way because I am a man and my body and everything matters, so that's why I'm saying it's a little bit presumptuous, but I really truly don't think I would give a fuck. But it might be the case yeah. that not everybody feels that way. There are some people where some aspects of their life are incredibly important to them. That might be family. It might be um, their religion is a really big one yeah, for some yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. So. I have to be careful when I talk to, so it's easy for me, or I don't want to say I see where you're coming from because it makes it sound like, oh, I know everything. I'm, I, I know everything you're thinking, but I, I can empathize with your position of it's like, well, I don't feel like gender matters that much at all. Why are these people literally like so distraught over it? But when I look at how other people act and I say like, okay, you're willing to fucking commit suicide because this is giving you so much anguish. Maybe I don't, I, yeah. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for that reason. And I, mm -hmm. I, I get, I get what you're saying. Um, I've had similar experiences where I'm like, like I had a friend in, uh, in LA mm -hmm. who was very religious and her boyfriend, she was forbidden from dating her boyfriend and he moved to New York. And I was like, well, just move to New York. Like, what do you, why well, you're still here? You're living with your parents. You're still here. You're like 25 years old. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And, um, over the course of our friendship, which like years, she basically didn't budge an inch. Um, incredibly miserable, trapped, um, like a character in a Disney movie, mm -hmm. where it's like, I like, it, it, like I know you grew up watching these movies. You know what the right answer is, and that's another weird thing. It's like culturally, we we do have the story of like, oh, you should defy your parents and defy authority and go be your true self and fall mm -hmm. in love and stuff. But uh, most people aren't like that. Mm -hmm. This they're, like they're ultra very, individualist, ultra liberal idea of like being a rugged individual and blah, blah, blah. It's like, uh, I don't know if everybody can do that all the yeah, time. Most, yeah, most people will just suck up to their parents mm -hmm. until they're dead. For sure. And then, and then have a midlife crisis. Um, so I get what you're saying. And I, I agree that that is a flaw in um, both our ways of thinking about this that were uh, possibly just weird. But 
to me, I can see why I am like that. Like, my mom's a lesbian. Mm-hmm. And I, I grew up listening to uh, Prince and Madonna and Michael Jackson. Like, those, those, there was, they were like the holy trinity. And, and like, they all basically cross-dressed. And so, and I grew up in Amherst, Massachusetts, which is like super liberal. And so, um, I had the idea of gender like deconstructed for me at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I have to assume that that is a lot of why I think and feel the way I do. So, I don't. It feels like you're giving up on people a bit. If you, um, it's, it's not, it's not like an enlightenment. Like, well, I guess I do feel. I, I when I you say give up, I, I think I understand what you mean. That it's like, well, hold on. Like maybe these people could actually like, I don't want to say think their way out of it. Cause that sounds a little bit like easy, but maybe if these people spent some time like deliberating on this, it would be easier for them to move from these positions rather than having to like go through these expensive surgeries or hormone treatments. Yeah, like when I went, when I first started going to therapy, mm-hmm. the shit I thought I wanted was wrong for years. Mm-hmm. You know, I was wrong. I knew what I wanted. I would have done anything to get it. And I was wrong. And I needed somebody to tell me that I was wrong or he, he, he knew he, it's not even what happened. It, I just needed the space to be forced to sit and have someone to sit with me so that eventually I could find out what I, I actually think. It's not, I don't think that that kind of healing or self discovery is fun. And I feel like, We've made a kind of roller coaster for trans people that is fun. And I don't think we're doing it because we want to help. I think we're doing it uh, out of self preservation. Not, not you, but I think <laughs> that our society in general is, is reluctant to challenge people. And I think there is a loving way to challenge trans people that, that I feel like it's, there's too often a false dichotomy of like, you're either is saying yes you are truly a woman and this is your destiny and you're, you're whatever and you, you have to have these surgeries and we'll all pay for it and congratulate you and throw your party or you're a mentally ill asshole and i hate you and you threaten my religion and fuck you and like there has to be something else where we're it's like a loving loving boundaries of being like you you need like you can go to planned parenthood and get hormones the same day now mm-hmm. and like People are fine with this. And it's like, if you're right that there are people who think they're trans, but they're not really trans, which I believe is all trans people and you believe is some subset, either way, I think we both agree that you probably shouldn't be able to um, go to Planned Parenthood when you're 18 and get hormones the same day without ever talking to a therapist or a specialist or fucking anybody. You could watch a YouTube video instructing you on how to do this and have hormones in your system 24 hours later. Sure. That's to me. That's a problem, and it's just a symptom of that there not being any way to be like, hey, like maybe this is more complicated, and maybe your feelings about your life and about yourself and about your body are all really complicated. Maybe we have to sit down and like sift through all this shit together, and it, maybe it's going to take like months or years, and then once we've done all that, like at a certain point, I, I like sure. Um, I don't think we can like just stop people from doing what they want at a certain point, but like, man, it, it, it just, it doesn't feel empathetic to, I don't think accepting people's narratives about themselves at face value and then jumping to kind of like drastic treatments is empathetic either. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so, okay, let me paraphrase a little bit, uh, summarize, you can tell me if you agree, because I think you're largely saying things that I agree with. Um, we've moved to a society where um, we feel the need to over-accommodate for every type of behavior, and people are starting to view challenges as always negative when some challenging experiences can be enriching or you can grow from and learn from them, Right. Yeah. And your worry is that we've kind of like, we've taken that idea and we've distilled it down into such a perfect formula. We've applied this to almost every area of our lives. And one of those areas might be for trans people. So 
maybe you might say a statement like, okay, even if I agree that trans people are real, and even if I agree that they should have surgery, and even if I agree in hormone therapy and all this other stuff, and I'll even treat them differently, at the very least, isn't it a little bit strange that you admit that there are some trans people that are probably just confused or whatever. Don't you think that there should be some barrier there or some conversation that should happen with a licensed professional before they get therapy? Or I'm sorry, before they get like hormone replacement therapy or something? And if not, isn't that just an example of like potentially being over accommodating towards people's, you know, uh, thoughts and feelings without ever actually challenging them in a way that might be better than just them having surgery or hormone replacement therapy? Is that, sorry, I was worried. Yeah, be, but. but yeah, because mm -hmm. if you're wrong, Mm -hmm. And you're, if you if you take your 16 year old or 14 year old to get puberty blockers, mm -hmm. um, or you're a therapist and you approve this, like, what if you're just throwing them under the bus and allowing them to what do what they are later going to perceive as damage their bodies, mm -hmm. and some, like some detransitioners do feel like this. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't want to have to be in the hot seat of saying, let's talk this through. Mm -hmm. It's going to be complicated. It's going to be painful. You're going to hate me. But I think we need to talk this through. Yeah, sure. I don't think I necessarily have a problem with that. And I think I might even go a step further and say, actually, I don't need to go a step further. So I've gotten into fights a lot with people because there was a really big trend online of like, helping people figure out that they're trans and then like getting them all these like weird kind of like Russian sites to order hormones from. So you never have yeah. to tell a parent therapist, right? This is a big fight I got into with a lot of people. Um, and I, I, and I had issues with this for a variety of reasons, but, um, I think that the problem here is that like, I'll admit that sometimes people take it a little bit far on, on the left when it comes to this, but I still wouldn't go fully over to the area of like, so at some point we, we can't escape this. So at some point we're going to have to like pour over the literature and say like, well, how successful is it to try to like detrans somebody? And my understanding is that similar to like sexual orientation conversions, like taking a gay person, and making them straight, it just seems like it's not very effective. It seems like that doesn't really work out that well most of the time. And by most of the time, I mean like, it wrong. okay. And that might be the case. But then, because we're, mm -hmm, the, part, yeah. part of the problem is we're trying to to detransition somebody in a society that m made them trans in the first place. Like we, I think that we, as evidenced by your all boys school and my experience of kind of most people's relationships with their bodies, mm -hmm. we have created, and I don't, I don't think it's innate to our species, but for some reason people feel super viscerally attached to their societally constructed genders and how that relates to their bodies. Mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't think that it has to be that way. So sure. And I would even, it might, I might even agree with be, you here. There might even be some trans people that would agree with you. I've had conversations and this is a very contentious story. It's very difficult because sexual and all this is very difficult. How do you separate your internal feelings versus societally reinforced ones? Right. That's almost impossible to do. But yeah, um, you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there are, and I, I think you can find some trans people that will say, you know, in a totally different type of society, I might not be trans. That might actually even be the, I've talked to trans people that have said that to me before. In a totally different type of society, I, maybe I wouldn't be trans. Maybe I would just be a tom girl, or maybe I would just be like a feminine man. Maybe it would just be different. Maybe I wouldn't have that feeling. Yeah. I find that mm -hmm. unacceptable. Well, so the issue is, is like, let's say that that is the case. Yeah. Even if that was the case, now we're confronted with two potential solutions then to a person's transness. Um, either one, we figure out a way to accommodate them, meaning um, surgery or hormones, or two, we change all of society. I and think I, two. Yeah, but the hard part is how do you tell a person that they just have to suffer then while they wait on all of society changing to I'll, alleviate I'll their it. suffering? I'll, I'll handle that. Because you know the problem is if you don't do that, mm -hmm. it's like it's like um, it'd be like taking painkillers all day, and so you don't have to know when something is wrong. Like you can't. Society will not change until it sees the pain that it's causing, not just trans people. This is something that hurts everyone. It Does just it hurts though? Trans people. Or how, what do you I mean in so. terms of does it hurt everyone? I'm curious about that. What do you mean by that? When I see um, men 
and women who are so like uh, like uh, in LA I was a personal trainer mm -hmm. and like female clients all the time would say I want well I, I, they would come in and say I want to be smaller but I want to be toned mm -hmm. and I'd say okay so you want to lift weights and I'd say well I don't want to be bulky I don't want to look like a man mm -hmm. and I'll just see and so I would say okay so I would literally I just started I developed a speech I would say every single female client wants the same thing. Yeah. They want to be more toned. They want to be smaller somehow, but also bigger at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be bony. You don't want to be muscular and you don't want to be fat. So you don't want to exist. Sure. And so if you have to choose between one of those three, which you do, why don't we go with muscle since it's the one that like is healthy and like works. Mm -hmm. um, and like it, it, it's this like clash every single time. And I, in this like fear of appearing masculine or even appearing strong. Sure. I feel like negatively affects every woman. And then men, yeah, are terrified of being feminized in the slightest in any situation. I don't I don't think it's really suiting anybody. I, I just think that trans people are kind of the canary in the coal mine that are like, this sucks. Yeah, and that might be the case. It might be that trans people exist and have problems um, not necessarily inherent to their transness, but they might just exist at a very weird intersection of like four or five other societal facts. And then they're like an emergent problem of those facts where if anything else underneath maybe would it change, maybe those things wouldn't be as big a deal or wouldn't even yeah, exist. I think, I think we need to figure out what those are. Like what if mm -hmm. black people wanted to look white so they wouldn't have to deal with the racism in society? Mm-hmm. Would you be in favor of that if they could take a pill to look white so that they wouldn't have to individually feel the pain? If it was such a huge problem and if this provided like some sort of a, like alleviation of those symptoms or problems, then yeah, you're I think racism you have a, isn't a huge problem, Destiny. Not as nowhere near as much you're as some people are clear. Yeah, I know. I've, gonna I've argued about this a lot too. But um, but if it was, I would have an, a harder time telling somebody, no, you have to suffer through this because we're gonna make all of society better for you, just wait, or at least your children will be happier, you know? I think it's hard to you, compel okay. people to suffer on it. Do, uh -huh. do you see a sort of insidious evil that I see in uh, encouraging black people to take the pill? So if a black person says to me, mm -hmm. I hate being black, or say, say, wait, so you're saying you don't think racism is a huge problem or you do? Right now, I mean, I think it's a problem, but not as big as people complain about it. But <laughs> oh my god, okay. Um, let's say, do you think it was a problem in, uh, in like the 19... early '60s? Yeah, or early the '50s? 60s. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so black people in the early '60s want to take a pill to look white. Mm -hmm. Do you see that if I am, say, I'm a really white person, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a Jew. Say, I'm not a Jew. And I have a, wh a white picket fence and I have a nice white family and um, I don't really want the status quo to change, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm on top mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm winning. And then a black, my black neighbor is saying, oh, I don't know if I should take the pill. And I say, oh, well, I want to be your supportive liberal friend. Of course you should take the pill. I'll help you get the pill. I'll help you get it as fast as possible. It's, it's, there's an insidious darkness I see in what we're doing to trans people, the way it, it actually reinforces the status quo and it makes it so the rest of us don't have to change yeah so this is something that i've wrestled with for a long time the the easier w way to kind of phrase this is that like if we're trying to break gender norms how can you do that while simultaneously reinforcing them with hormone therapy and surgery right like on one end we want to say that a woman doesn't have to be this but a trans person basically says no i have to be this if i'm going to be a woman right yes although mm -hmm. i think i'm talking about something also deeper than gender norms of um Mm -hmm. I, I understand what you're saying. A I, deeper, forcing people to develop a deeper understanding of their relationships with their bodies that I agree would result mm -hmm. in changing gender norms. But I mm -hmm. feel like there's a scary thing underneath that that people don't want to confront. Sure. It's almost, is this kind of similar to, you've heard of the idea of like CRISPR, like gene editing and stuff. It's the idea yeah. of like, should we let our kids, should we be able to gene edit like hair colors or eye colors? Um, maybe it would result in them having like easier lives because they look more conventionally attractive, but what is the world you're creating if you go down that road? Kind of a similar argument to that. 
because rather um, than forcing people to become comfortable having different colors of eyes and different types of bodies, we're basically saying that like there's a one size fits all and everybody should be allowed to change to that. And we kind of like lose that facet of the human experience. That, but underneath it, I also think that there's a, at the end of the day, there's always going to be that um, self-hatred somewhere. And if you can't sit with a lot of it, I don't, mm -hmm. or a little of it, I just think that that allowing black people to feel bad about their blackness, we've lost the ability to do that. Where you're not allowed to do that. You're not if you're fat, you're not allowed to feel bad about being fat. You're not allowed to feel bad about anything anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not for liberals. It's <laughs> it's not. It's not progressive to say on Instagram, like. Uh, yeah, I'm fat and I want to lose 20 pounds. That's that's a hateful thing. Even if you're just talking about yourself, you you it's hate speech now. Mm -hmm. And that just not leaving room for bad feelings about yourself, I don't think is good for anybody. And I think that the rest of us kind of get to skirt it if our feelings aren't that bad, mm -hmm. or we have a way to cover them up. And um, I think we're 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 I think that's part of a big thing that we're evading by encouraging trans people to just fix it or people to get plastic surgery. Yeah, I think like like on the broader level, I agree with what you're saying, but the problem is that we're gonna- I, Then we, you have to tell individual people- like, no, no, the problem is we're gonna butt heads again on that fundamental fact that we talked about earlier is, because yeah. at the very beginning of this conversation, you said rightfully so, and I, and I would admit to the opposite, that if we would determine that there are female brains and male brains, then this is then trans people in society and accommodations made for them is going to be like an inescapable fact. Um, and if there aren't um, if there aren't trans brains, then we need to work on some other way to help these people, basically. But it seems like we're running into that uh, we're running into that wall again because like no uh, no 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 you, you gave me you gave me a loophole. What was that? That there are some people who, if their brains don't match their bodies. Mm -hmm could find that a beautiful, fun, interesting thing that does not necessarily make you want to die. Well, sure, that but I mean, you, like, to if be... if you woke up as a woman tomorrow, uh -huh. you, you would not experience stomach-churning, life-ending dysphoria. You would just be like, oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. And that... Um, so even if trans people's brains are in the wrong bodies, that does not necessarily need to lead to surgery, hormones, or... Um, suicidality. Yeah, and this is true. Um, and and most. Um, so I don't know how familiar with this concept, and maybe this sounds like I'm making stuff up. But I, I think most trans people would agree with that as well, um, because you have. Um, th th this is why tran being trans is not considered um, the mental illness, but rather gender dysphoria is considered the mental illness. And there are trans people that don't have that dysphoria. Like they're trans and their body doesn't match the brain, but they don't have like a severely horrible feeling about it. That it's just like kind of like a fact of their world. And these people might not find it necessary to transition or something, right? Okay, so the, yes. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you, yeah, I think that's fine then. Then then if they get surgery, then I think it's electives or it's basically plastic surgery. Yeah, basically cosmetic surgery. Fun. Yeah. Um, wait, so what's... What's there? What am I supposed to argue with you about? Um, you're saying, well, you're so saying I, I that, just, yeah, I, I understand that there are some people that only do for cosmetic um, reasons, and we can both acknowledge that those people might exist. And I, being, I, yeah, yeah, so uh -huh. the dysphoria itself is not caused by being in the wrong body, if that's the, even possible. Yeah, the, the dysphoria, dysphoria seems to stem from a, a huge a, a t attachment sure. to your gender identity. <clears throat> but and until that, and that happens with this people as well. Mm -hmm. But until we've actually like got any data or any methodology by which to remove that attachment, it just seems to be too big an ask to tell a group of people um, that are like killing themselves at unbelievably high rates to say like, well, hold on, chill while we fix society and then you can figure it, you know. I think, I think the suicidality also comes first. I think that's another reason I'm more comfortable saying this is that I think that w if you want to end your life and you want to kill yourself, um, a complete wipe of your identity and name and how everybody talks to you mm -hmm. seems like a kind of, I'm not going to kill myself, I'm going to do this instead. 
Oh, okay. I understand what you're saying. Um, at some point, we're going to start so, bumping into empirical stuff, but I, I don't think that's the normal trans experience. I don't think that it's like clinically understood that like there are people that are suicidal who then just become trans to escape their suicidality. I don't think that's yeah. The I just experience. I, I I just think this. Okay, well, and yeah, so, but we have to uh, contend with uh, the, what is the reality. Because if what you're saying is true, then you I don't would... have to contend with reality. I'm well, not trying to get you. I'm not trying to get you to agree with me. Mm -hmm. I'm just explaining because you're saying I don't feel comfortable saying to trans people hold tight while we fix society when the, the response to that might be an increase in suicidality. Well, sure, but I'm, My, what I'm saying is that like, do you, when I say deduction, does that mean anything to you or deductive reasoning? Um, basically what I'm saying is that like, if I give you two premises, we can both agree on a conclusion. If I say all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, hopefully you and I both would agree, Socrates therefore is mortal because the conclusion must come from the premises, right? But when I say deduction, I'm just saying that like, conclusions naturally stem from our like premises yeah 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 so what all i'm saying is that like for some of the premises that you're giving me if i were to accept these as true i would there's no it, your conclusion is inarguable if there were a whole bunch of people no, no, that no, were suicidal trying, and trying, then they became that's trans what, that's what, yeah that's what that's mm -hmm. what i'm saying i'm not trying to convince you of anything i'm just trying to explain to you why i feel the way i do this is uh, this is an emotional explanation because you're sure. saying you don't feel comfortable telling trans people um, or you think it's immoral, but which I again still think is an emotional thing. You're saying it doesn't feel right to tell trans people sit tight while we fix society when they're saying they're in extreme psychological distress and possibly suicidal. I'm saying if if you believe as I do that the suicidality is next to being trans or even underneath being trans, then you won't. Um, that's why I don't feel that it's wrong. To, to yeah, I understand. That. But like at some point, wouldn't we have, shouldn't we like check like the world to see like, does our feeling there match like the actual experience of people? Mm, um, I don't know that there's really a way to check this because I don't agree with, um, I don't really believe in self-reporting. Well, isn't that kind of the only, like we do self-reporting for crime, right? Like, or I mean, self-reporting of your... Who are you? What is your mm -hmm. emotional state? Why do you do what you do? How do you feel? Well, but self-reporting is like, even medically, like even from actual medical conditions, we have to rely on self-reporting, no? Yes, but um, that's self-reporting a bodily experience, which I do believe in. Like, are you in physical pain right now? Rate yourself from a one to 10. I think that that people are more reliable for that. But if you're, if you're taking somebody who intensely has a strongly desired outcome and narrative. Mm -hmm. the, the, the problem with being trans, one of the problems, yeah. is that in, innate in the identity is also a belief about the nature of what's happening. So like, if you talk to like, um, like any other psychologically diagnosed condition, usually the person's reporting their experience and then you take their experience and then you, the, sure. the clinician formulates it into a, a comparable narrative. thing would be is like, they, let's say somebody looks up like, this is what ADHD is. And then they read all the symptoms and you're saying it's kind of like going into the doctor's office. And then you're basically reciting the symptoms that you led because you already believe you had it. So you're always going to get, yeah, I mean, them, yeah, right? we, we, we know mm -hmm. that trans people on, on social media coach each other and what to say in order to get the hormones. Like sure. that's pretty, and again, understandable. Like I would do the same thing if mm -hmm. I wanted the hormones, then fucking what, tell me what I have to say. Um, but even beyond that, ADHD itself at its core is, does not involve a belief about ADHD. Being trans at its core involves a belief. I mean, and the, the, I, the I, belief, would, I don't know if it's important, but I would disagree belief, with that, but yeah, go ahead. The fundamental belief that you can be in the wrong body and that you are in the wrong body. So any any questionnaires mm -hmm. or interviews done with a trans person is going to it's it's it to it's me tainted it's like, in that way. It's, it's yeah, they're going to answer from that frame. And so if as the interviewer I'm saying my belief is that trans people are very angry people like incredibly angry people who do not know how to express their anger outwardly and turn it inward. And that trans people are um, very sad and want their lives, want to hit the eject button on their lives in some way. 
What about for like trans people that there are like historically we can find people that report feelings of like being trans before there's even like a scientific description or understanding of any of these ideas though? I think uh, I why why does that contradict what I'm saying? Um, because uh, yeah, I yeah, believe I with you, yeah. there isn't an existing framework mm -hmm. to buy for them into, to kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't necessarily, I do think that there's definitely a social contagion aspect for sure, but I don't think that's kind of the core of what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a, a, if you imagine someone who cannot express anger outwards, especially to their parents or, or, um, teachers or figures of authority mm -hmm. and turn it inwards and that person feels trapped and bullied and just desperately wants to escape their lives. I think it is likely, or it makes sense to me, that they would arrive at the conclusion of, oh, I'm not me. I am, I'm not this way. I am this other person. I'm a, I'm, I'm a woman, or I'm a man. That it's a desire to get out. I understand, but like... It, and, and I'm not saying this is provable. I'm yeah. just saying I think I'm saying I think this. So mm -hmm. if you if you just accept that I think this, and mm -hmm. I know I know you may not agree, mm -hmm. then you can see why telling me, oh, but we asked them, and they said they said they weren't suicidal. I would say, well, yeah, they don't. That of course they're going to say that. Like I don't mm -hmm. I don't think they know why they're feeling what they're feeling, and it's the job of psychology to figure that out. And I think that they're that psychologists with regard to this issue are being uncharacteristically permissive in allowing the patient to define what's happening with them. When, when someone comes in and says, I'm getting messages from Mars, we say, Oh, you know, we have a name for that. And mm -hmm. it's not the name that you think we, we, there's a lot of people like you, mm -hmm. we have a name for all of them. And, uh, it actually, what you're saying is not that unique and here's what you need to do. And here's mm -hmm. how we're going to approach this rather than I, I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I agree, saying, I agree with you, but we're bumping back again into that descriptive fact of the matter, because like, yeah, it, you, let's you, say, you, let's you, say that there I'm, were people that had that thing, but then like, let's say that we started to investigate the brains of these people and all of them had like some microscopic antenna that seemed to be only in their brains. At some point we'd be like, well, hold on, wait, maybe there is something else here that's worth investigating. But we haven't found that. Well, for we've trans found, people, we, found we do things see... that we Trans people mm -hmm. think we found it. And schizophrenic people have think, think that we have, we do, they do think they have found antennas. You don't let the fucking patient look for the proof. Well, no, we're not, we're not talking delusion. about this. There's not like trans biologists are the only people saying this. Like there are regions of the brain. A lot of them are. If you, uh, and, and my research are trying to find out like, okay, who's saying this? A lot of the papers are written by trans people, but that, let I mean, me, they're, it's published in peer reviewed journals. Like, I, I don't know what the, like trans reviewed journal. No, let me no, back up. I don't, I, think, I, 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 don't I, I know. I know. I said, that's a joke. Okay. Let me, back up to this you just accept the premise of transness more than i do significantly more and that i don't accept it at all and you accept it <laughs> well hold on slightly. wait wait hold on that's not fair are you familiar with the concept of like uh like bayesian probability so uh, ba ba let's say basically yeah, both of us he here's of. like the difference okay so i'm starting like i would hope that my prior assumption is like are trans people real or are trans people fake? And I would start at like a eh, 50%. Could be, they could be real, they could be fake. And I will adjust my expectation of their realness or their fakeness based on the information that I get. And as I've gotten more information, so for instance, I see people willing to kill themselves over their transness. I see that historically trans people have existed before the concept of transness existed. I see that neuro neuroscientists and neurobiologists are finding differences in brain structures between trans people um, and cis people. As that happens, my probability gets updated more and more. It's like, okay, maybe I started off 50, 50. No, I'm like 60, 40. No, I'm like 65, 35, right, it gets updated. So my only question is- Where are you, where are you now? Um, for, for trans people being like a, a real thing that like, now this isn't saying that they're born trans or anything like that, but like, I don't know, based on everything I've seen, probably like 80, 20, it seems like pretty, pretty reasonable to me. It seems like there's like more and more literature that comes out that kind of like reaffirms this position. Now that's not to say it's okay. impossible that that'll change in the future. Maybe something comes out in the future. And it's like, well, actually we found this chemical that makes people feel this way and this can be changed or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
So I've got two. So one one thing. Mm -hmm. If someone comes in and says Martians are sending me messages, mm -hmm. you don't start at fifty percent for that. No, my prior for that is going to start out much 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 lower. Yeah. Uh, at zero. Uh, no, four. never zero. Close close I think a really important thing for humans is you never start off with a zero percent probability. Your your a priori uh, probability. It's always going to be closer at least like closer, closer yeah, it'll, be it'll be low. It'll be like point one percent or something. Yeah, point zero one percent, okay. but never zero. Okay, yeah. so it will be the floor. Close, yeah. There's thing. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So that's where I'm at, and that's where I started at, and I think that we both agree you would be doing a disservice to the patient if the patient comes in and says Martians are sending me messages to start at fifty percent, um, and then say, well, let's start collecting evidence and see what we find. That would be unethical to do. Um, for the Martian thing, yeah, probably, because we've got so much other evidence already investigating this stuff in the background, yeah. Do you think it's unethical to do that um, if your internal response, and this is basically an emotional response, is like, that's not fucking true. Uh, and you can say it's a logical analysis, you've arrived at this point, but like, like I'm an atheist, mm -hmm. and like... I don't care how many, like, if you talk to a Christian, they'll say, oh, you know, in a week, I can show you evidence. And then you're just like, well, no, you can't. You're just going to show me other shit that you made up or shit that you twisted into blah, blah, blah. But for an, from an atheist perspective, I, I don't fucking care what you say. It's not true. Damn, it's I don't think you should true. think that. I'm a super strong atheist, but I, I would never say that my, like, probability of existence has got a 0%. I would say it's very, very, very slim. But I could be shown evidence that would convince me otherwise. And even you believe that. Like, if God no, fucking appeared, no, no, no. you do. No, oh, no, you don't. If God appeared, if God appeared You'd more likely me. assume you were crazy than not? Of course. I Do you, um... I would assume I was crazy. If I say like epistemic nihilism, does that mean anything to you, or is that like a bunch jumble of dumb fucking? What, uh, Do you believe no, that like you can ever know the fact of the matter about stop, anything? Stop right? proving that I don't know what these words mean. No, yeah, oh, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm sure, well, because I don't want to explain something to you, and then you're like, I know what that means. You're uh, fucking idiot. You're I, of course, I, 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 I know what you mean, sure. but I think your viewers might not. So why yeah, don't okay, you that's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. What I'm basically asking is that like, um, I just want to explain something. Like I'm condescending you. I'm not trying to do that. Okay. Um. Do you well, believe you're being condescending in a different way, Thanks. and I prefer I try, the first you know? one. I prefer the over-explaining one. Gotcha. Okay. So for, then I can just have a poker face and just wait for you to finish and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Bye, bad. Okay, okay. okay. What, what basically what I'm asking you is that, like, could you know the fact of the matter about anything? Do you think that any particular truth is knowable? Because my next question, what I was going to explore with you, but I think I already know how this is going to end, because my next question is going to ask you is like, okay, well, what if three other people all saw the same godlike entity? But your response would probably, well, I would assume that all of us are crazy and there was a contagion. And then what if I said that, like, what if 100 people saw it? It feels like your next answer would be like, okay, well, these are either a mass contagion or I'm dead and I'm having, like, a hallucination or something. Or I was drugged and I'm not, like, seeing anything real. Sounds like that's what you would right. say, yeah? I think so. I, so, yeah, mm -hmm. that's where I'm at with trans, the trans yeah. issue. So, I'm like, my, my I'm, question, I'm, my next question on that then basically is that, like, do you ever worry that you've established a world or you've put yourself in kind of a world where... There might be true things, but because of your, the, your, say, the way that you view truth, that it's impossible to convince you of some things that are actually true. I would say that that is a um, definitional flaw of what I'm telling you about myself. That has to be true. There must be things that are true that I can't be convinced of. There must be things that are true, but you can't be convinced of those things. Is yeah, that okay it, it, for you? That, or do you that, accept that? or? I accept that. Yeah. I accept why, that more than... Why? Why would you want that? That seems kind of bad. Well, I don't think I can choose this. I think this is just how I'm wired. Okay, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a experiment, there's a social psychology experiment. Mm -hmm. There's two that I want to tell you about that you you probably already know them. But one... Explain for the just audience. Just for, yeah. for, for, for the audience, right? Okay. So one is um, they have a line on a... Two lines on a board. Oh, asks line test or whatever, right? I don't know what the fuck it's called. Oh, never the mind. Line A, yeah. line A is long, longer than line B. Mm -hmm. Is this what you're talking about? The one, the social pressure getting somebody to say that yeah. the line, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have one test subject per classroom, mm -hmm. and every other person in the classroom says the short one is longer. And they have to raise their hands one at a time and say they say, which one's longer? And every other person in the room says line B is longer, when it's clearly line A. Mm -hmm. And then you see how easy is it to get the subject to agree with the rest of the class, even though that's clearly not true. Mm -hmm. And it's not 
it's that most people go along with it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's and most, then, but it's a surprisingly high number. I think it was like 38% or something, but it's a lot. More, like when the answer is clearly wrong, you can get more than a third of people to say that like the other answer because of social pressure. Yeah, it, it is a surprise. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the smoke, the smoke coming into the room test. Have you heard of this one? I don't know this one. So you have, you have a bunch of people uh, answering like logic questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's only one participant. And in the middle of the test, they start pumping smoke under the door. And then you just see every, uh, and, the, and the, obviously the person looks look, looks around and starts getting antsy in their seat. Mm -hmm. But everyone else just pretends they don't notice. And then you see how long it takes them to say like, "Hey, there's smoke coming into the room." Um, and it's like, again, surprisingly, a much longer time than if other people are are also reacting and saying, "Oh, what's that?" Sure. So. Yes, it is a flaw of mine that there are things that are true that I cannot ever be convinced of. But the the plus side is that I will never be in that 38% or whatever uh, who says line B is longer than line A mm -hmm. when it's not. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so here, so this is, um, I used to be very religious and then I became an atheist um, as I went through high school. Um, okay. So this is kind of the, the classic challenge. I, I'm just curious how you resolve this. So I accept that there are people that think like that. Now, normally I apply this to religious people. And, but what I don't accept is that that can be a reasonable way to live. Because my next question is, what do you do if you come up against somebody that feels the same way, but they have a different interpretation of reality that necessitates like a harm to you? How do you ever resolve disputes between two people like that? So let's say that they come up to you and let's say that they, they know that they're living in the matrix. They just do, they know 100%. They're totally convinced of it. Um, nothing you say can change their mind about it. And they also think that you're about to turn into Agent Smith. So they have to kill you, right? When you start to get societies full of people that accept that they can't really truly know anything, uh, but they're still gonna act on those convictions and give societal prescriptions for what we should do. How do you resolve those differences between people? I'm just curious. There's not. This is a really hard question. Also, I don't expect you to like. Oh, you just do this. But that, that's that's kind I of like think, always my well, issue. I think yeah. democracy is a good one. Like we, um, if everybody shares the same delusion, mm -hmm. then that's fine. There's nothing to. You can't do anything about that anyway. Well, sure, but this isn't. We're having a conversation over not how the world is, but how we want it to be. Because right now, yeah, yeah, my understanding me, is you're not me, happy me, with me, democracy, right? Yeah. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. If a chunk of people believe that you're going to turn into Agent Smith, but it's not most people, then it's going to be illegal to kill me. So mm -hmm. we have cops and laws to prevent people from doing that. So they know well, I, I, yeah, I'm supposed to kill Max, but I shouldn't because I'm or I can't. Someone will stop me or if I do, I'll get thrown in jail and then eventually all the Matrix people will either end up in jail or they'll say or they'll do what most religious people do now, which is say like, yeah, the book says I'm supposed to kill that person, but God damn it, I want to, you know, get home for dinner, so I'm not going to. Okay. But we use democracy and the law to say, yeah, you can believe what you want to believe, but if you act on it, like, you're you're out of society. And now if you have, a like, a super religious society, like, with Sharia law, then, then most people... Are, well, are either pretending to believe or do believe in whatever, and then that just becomes the law. And I, um, that, like, that makes sense to me. I don't, I, I don't, I guess I don't like it, but, um, yeah. So my answer to your question is, is democracy and just telling people like, you, well, you, we don't, we don't, you don't have to agree with me. Mm -hmm. I, I feel yeah, this but, way about white supremacists. Sure. I'm like, you don't, I don't, I, you don't have to believe that I'm like not an evil Jew. Mm -hmm. It's fine for you to think that. I don't, I don't agree with the whole like punch Nazis or force them to think what I think thing, but I just don't, I don't want you to be in charge of the laws. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but the problem is we're not having a conversation over what society is. We're having a conversation over what society should be because right now it seems like we're moving in a direction where democracy disagrees with you because people seem to be making way more concessions to trans people than what you personally would are comfortable with right so you're trying to argue against right now the democratic will of the people using your own kind of like existence that you yourself said is in some ways no, no, like no, unfalsifiable no, no. I, yeah go ahead i i agree with what you said before mm -hmm. that 
we the rubber band thing we need people to push back mm -hmm. against everything and i don't want trans people to stop doing what they're doing mm -hmm. if you're trans and that's what you believe is going to make you happy then i want you to do what you think is best for you and if you're a trans advocate i want you to do what you think is best for trans people um what i'm arguing against is one i think some people are going along with this for their own personal selfish reasons and they don't believe they're doing what's best for trans people and i think that's wrong and I'm, i want to ask them to stop doing that and two i want to fulfill the role that you're describing earlier of um i think it's going too fast and i just i just i don't want people to agree with me i'm not out to try to get everybody to think like me i don't it's not it's not like the matrix thing in the sense that like i I do. I would want that person to just change their mind. I don't feel that way about trans people. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and it's and and some of the stuff we're talking about really comes down to philosophy, and like it does come down to semantics and uh, and the utility of the definitions we're going to arrive at. I don't want everybody to share my definitions. I just want people to think about it, and I don't want to control the government. I don't want to say you can't teach this in school. Um, if most people believe this, then make make it the law. Give them whatever protections they want. That's fine. I do believe in democracy, and I, I'm not I'm not trying to argue against the will of the people. I'm trying to be that um, nagging voice, or or to, or just not nagging voice. I'm trying to create a comfortable space for uncomfortable feelings and uncomfortable conversations that. In, in the conservative pushback, the Ben Shapiro, like, I'm going to mock you and call you stupid and crazy in front of all your classmates and then cut your mic off. Like, the, the conservative pushback against this is very unkind. It comes from a similar place that we were talking about earlier where Ben Shapiro, if Ben Shapiro woke up in a woman's body tomorrow, he would kill himself. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not what I'm advocating for. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, and I think I think what I'm trying to present here is missing of like maybe there's a nice way to say no to this and maybe we're capitulating too much and we need to look in the mirror and make sure we're 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 all doing and saying what we really believe. Sure. I don't think I'd necessarily disagree with that. I mean, as I said earlier, like the natural tension, everything is good and fine. Um <clears throat> I guess it just comes down to like, how do we determine which statements we believe are true and which statements we don't believe are true, like about relating to trans people, whatever. Cause it sounds like you have like a collection of experiences that you feel, um, give supersede. you a pretty, what? Yeah. Super so feel supersede all else. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we, I think we probably agree more with black lives matter, right? Like protests are good and riots are bad. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Right. And, but, but for some reason, lots of people are uncomfortable making that distinction. Yeah, but to say stop fucking rioting, you're not helping anything, yeah. is seen as kind of a racist. Um, like we we agree that progressives have become overly permissive with regards to violence in the street. That say that one more time. Progressives are overly permissive oh. when it comes to, to rioting and violence. Yeah, kind of yeah. Right, and because it doesn't happen where they live, but yeah. But even that, a progressive would say, "Well, so the, a black neighborhood isn't as is, is no more dangerous than a white." How could you like to the point where you're starting to erase the experiences of black people and even their problems and and how carefully and you're talking yeah, I agree. I understand. I've said this a lot that sometimes people are so quick to try to get rid of some things that they forget that they're now they're conceding ground on arguments that they don't want to concede ground on that they shouldn't actually be. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, exactly. And so, I just think that the right with Black Lives Matter is not providing the empathetic i mean no one is mm -hmm. the, the 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 tension in like these political discussions is almost entirely empathy free on both sides now about everything um so yeah i just wanted to i just wanted to say that to clarify that i'm i'm not trying to squish the will of trans people or progressives and i'm not trying to advocate for the conservative um you ranting about how black people don't have fathers or fix your neighborhood or get a job or whatever, just prescriptive, dismissive, um, unempathetic, you know, shit. I, I don't, 
I don't want to do that to trans people, and I don't, I'm not advocating for that. Sure. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, well, okay. I don't know where you want to go from here. Uh, uh, I don't know either. Wasn't much of a debate. It was like it was almost like we had a conversation. Well, I mean, that was your goal, right? That was my goal. <laughs> I've accomplished it. Okay. Well, good, congratulations. Good job. Thanks. Good job to you too, man. Wow. Thanks a lot. Thanks. You're welcome. Um. Well. Any final words? Any parting thoughts? Anything you want to leave us with, or any other questions, thoughts, concerns, comments? Um, no, just, just, just that, you know, uh, don't, don't punch Nazis. You empathize with, empathize with the people who you think hate you the most and mm -hmm. who you hate the most. That's all. Oh, okay. Actually here, um, cause you bring up the Nazis and we talked about trans people, so it's all kind of relevant. Um, here is, yeah. he, he, so here's something that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> there's something called, I'll explain this for the audience because obviously you knew about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 It's something called the paradox of intolerance. Um, so an issue that we, or the paradox of tolerance actually. So one issue you run into is liberals will say something along the lines of like, we should tolerate all points of view. But mm -hmm. what do you do when you tolerate somebody who doesn't tolerate your point of view? Um, and people are worried that there might be a paradoxical thought there where if you are tolerant of everybody, eventually there are going to be people that make it to um, areas of power where they use that power in a way to become intolerant. And now because you were tolerant of them, you've basically lost yourself. Um, so this is relevant when we talk about trans people. So yeah, I don't know about your life. My life is definitely cushy now with, with how I exist. There's not really that much in the world that's very threatening to me. Um, regardless of political systems, whatever, there's, there's not much that's going to fuck with me unless something like personal happens, you know? systems. I get really a lot of death threats. Sure, yeah, I get those too, but I'm, people on Twitter are whatever. Um, yeah. <clears throat> do you think that there might be trouble sometimes? So when you talk about like, oh, you know, just be chill, understand people disagree, like that's cool, cool, cool. Do you think that that might be more difficult when somebody feels like the stakes are significantly higher when it comes to the conversation that's happening? Yeah, that's why I said don't punch Nazis because I'm a Jew. So I, mm -hmm. I get to play the like, you know, family died in the Holocaust and I, I would be right there with them card mm -hmm. to make it have a little more weight, I think. What if there was a Nazi political party in the United States that had like, say, 25 percent favorability? They weren't like the majority, but there was like a sizable chunk of people. Would you ever look at that kind of sideways no. and be like, or do you just oh, like? I would, be, I would be super concerned about it, but mm -hmm. I would you again. Free speech and democracy have to come first. Um, did you do you know about the case of the uh, neo Nazis wanting to march through the um, Jewish community in Skokie, Illinois? Yeah, it was a really famous ACLU case. Yeah. Yes, and the, and the Jews at the ACLU represented their right to free speech, mm -hmm. and I that's um, the ACLU often takes hyper progressive stances that I disagree with, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'll always give them credit for that. That's that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I would be, um, I would be disagreeing with the Nazis' views mm -hmm. and fighting for their right to express them. How would you feel if there were like pogroms going on where you've got these Nazi people in office and now like Jewish stores and places are being destroyed and shit and they still want to go out and give speeches and stuff like maybe your own house hasn't been destroyed or anything but now like you're starting to see violence against Jewish people like do you still kind of have the same blase attitude towards it it's like oh you know you could put sucks, a but... shotgun in my mouth and I'm still not going to give up the first amendment like I do, I yes mm -hmm. I still believe this I I um I'm willing to sacrifice quite a lot for mm -hmm. um, Do you think that most freedom. people would have a sim that stance or No. No. Okay. Cuz I that's think why, um, when you talk about like That's why the mm -hmm. Okay. That's why it's so hard to alter the constitution because most people don't even believe in free speech for other people. Mm -hmm. They believe in it for themselves. So we have to protect Whatever we think is the most abhorrent, destructive 
views. Well, first of all, I don't think punching Nazis stops them. I think that actually might help them. Potentially, but like, that's boring. Let's not think about that. Especially Let's... like with somebody like Trump. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really don't like Trump. Sure. I think he's um, kind of a Nazi. Not 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 in necessarily his beliefs about race, mm -hmm. but his authoritarian um, just wanting to control everything. For sure. Right? Maybe he like he's definitely kind of like a fashy dude. Maybe not full on. Yeah. But like and, yeah, for sure. Okay, I can agree with that. He would go if he could go full on. He would. He's Absolutely. A, he's, he's a probing probing Nazi. He's sure. not gonna lead the charge but if somebody says hey you're the dictator of everything do you like our, our ideal president i think is someone like george washington who's gets offered power and says nah that's not a good idea sure. trump is not going to do that yeah um his victimhood is so much of what gives him power so one strategically i don't think it's good to punch nazis because they get people feeling sorry for them and especially now Anybody who can claim they're a victim is like immediately hoisted up, retweeted the fuck out of or whatever. But ideologically, yeah, I don't I don't think punching people stops them from believing what they're believing. I think you have to talk to them. So I don't even I don't even agree that it's it's not even a trade off for me. Like, I, I don't think if you start assassinating the leaders of the political party you're talking about or throwing them in jail i don't think that helps mm -hmm. i think that just makes things worse anyway so. yeah sure but I, this is that's the boring part let's because i largely agree with you but what i'm more interested in because for the okay. jewish thing it's one thing but when you look at people like um trans people or maybe other minority groups i think some of the issues that these people feel is that while you and i can have an incredibly detached and dispassionate conversation about these things it's because nothing is really at stake for us that much aside from things that like I don't want to say trans women or women, you know, fuck that, you know. But at the end of the day, it's not it's not super destroying our lives. Whereas the people on the other end of the conversation, I feel that, I feel, I feel that it is not nowhere near as much as it's impacting the other people who may or may not get treatment or medications or something, right? I think the impact is less immediate, but I feel like I think this is this is part of what I'm what I'm asking of the audience mm -hmm. to empathize with the people pushing back against this. Beyond, it's not just I don't feel like saying this. It it feels like a visceral. <laughs> Um, violation of my rights. Well, do you? Well, here's a question. Do you think that whether or not a gay person could be married or free of judgment in society, do you think that there is at much at risk for them as a person that's uncomfortable with gay people in society? I think the individual has more risk, but the other people think they're going to go to hell. Well, they they're going to go to hell, whether the gay people are going to go to hell. I don't know if really people think they're going to hell if other people around them are gay, right? Uh, I think there are some religious people who think that we our our society is going to lead go, more people to go you know, to hell. Our kids are going to be in concentration camps. We'll get smote from the earth. I do think that there are religious people who believe strongly that something very bad is going to happen to them if they allow gay marriage. Okay. I I just don't. I, yeah, I get what you're saying, and and like practically, I don't believe that. I don't agree with them, but from their point of view. They're not just doing it for no reason. Like they're actually really upset. No, I'm sure they the have their reasons. Really yeah, I know. And I, and I think they're but approaching like, that. Even that, if I, like, even if I grant all of that, even if I grant like, every single thing you're saying that they do believe it, right? We can still say at the end of the day, though, there's a difference between this kind of like um, theological harm that you, maybe you're gonna blah, 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 versus like my um, life right now is materially fucked and negatively impacted versus whether or not you think your future grant progeny is going to heaven or hell. No. No, I don't. I don't agree with your dismissiveness. Also, you're comparing me to a Nazi. Wait, how am I comparing you to a Nazi? Well, you're in this example. I'm the I am the oppressor, right? Well, no, no. I'm just saying that in general, for trans people, the way trans people look at me is they say this guy's spreading these ideas. He wants to take our medications away. He, I am the Nazi in this example, right? Well, I mean, it's not like a direct one-to-one -one comparison. I'm just saying that on when, in, in terms of the the okay. stick. I'm saying that our relationship to this conversation is that of a relatively detached and unaffected I'm just trying party. to fill oh. out the analogy. In this oh. analogy, I am the oppressor of trans people spewing my hateful ideas, right? Well, that's a really loaded way to say it. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to freak out. No, I'm not. I, I don't. But that's not even necessarily. I'm just saying that, like, we're having a conversation. We can. We can. How about this? We can move off of this conversation. We can talk about abortion. So that it's not as loaded. No, I don't want to. I don't. I. I uh, so, so like when, when it comes to abortion, whether or not abortions are legal or illegal, I with you. Yeah, I don't agree with you. I hate what you're saying, man. Which what is that? That some people are affected more by this conversation than we are. That you can 
dismiss the feelings. Of I'm not saying we dismiss them, but I'm saying it, that there's a it, clear. It's, w- it's not there, but there's it's a no, weight between one and the other. I don't think you should weigh them. But you I have think that, to. I think I don't agree. I disagree with you strongly. I think that if you, I believe that my neighbor, okay, mm-hmm. say every a couple of months, one of my neighbors takes a baby, puts it on their front lawn, and cuts its head off with a pair of garden shears. Okay. And I'm like, hey, can somebody stop this? I can't take it anymore. And then, and then all these women come out and say, well, you know what? You'll never give birth, so you don't get to have a say in this. I'm like, well, you, you don't care. You don't care about the baby. I do. I am being hurt by this more than you are. And they're like, no, oh, yeah? Well, I was going to have to raise this baby, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you're cutting his heads off in front of me, man. I can't deal with this. I would say in that example, that I think that is how some pro-life people feel. Sure, and I and understand that, what you're saying. That. I'm not saying that you can't have a feeling about it at all or that it doesn't affect you at all. I, you're saying yeah. it should not be. You're saying it should be. I'm saying that there's a, there's a different. Yes, when we're the, the making, waiting we're doing is there. The big, we're doing the big scale of like, okay, so. Here, wait, here, I can give a real life example of this. You and your girlfriend, are you still dating? Yeah. Okay. There might be a. You gotta wear her fucking shirt if we weren't dating. Maybe you're wearing a shirt because she died, and I was about to say something really stupid. Okay, I don't know. Fuck. Oh, your the, yeah. your shirt says like save somebody on it. Maybe she had fucking breast cancer. And now she's dead, and that's save okay. Shayla. No, the okay. shirt is um it's save her save her from me. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah. That's what I. Okay. So yes, I am checking. <laughs> that's what I assume. Okay. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> let's say that you two are having a conversation about where you want to go to eat. Now, let's say that she suggests I want to go to an Indian restaurant, and. You don't really want oh, to go to Indian restaurant? You what? This is perfect. This okay. is what happens. Gotcha. She likes Indian food, sure. and I hate it. Yeah, and you're like, I want to go to a steakhouse or just get fucking burgers. Who cares, right? Maybe something like that, right? Now, let's say that it's something where like you don't actually care that much. You'll eat Indian food. It's whatever. But let's say she feels really strongly about it. Um, if I have a relationship, I do have a relationship. If I have a disagreement in my relationship, I'm probably going to bend to the other person. If it's something they feel really strongly about. And but what if they always feel really strongly about it? Well, I then you. I mean, then we have to get into the validity of how that issue impacts them, and you become erased. Well, then you have to be careful. Well, I don't think that that's the case here. Now, if trans people started to say that like we can't have three D graphics anymore in video games, then maybe. But <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, then fuck them. Okay, um, but we're not at that point yet. Thankfully, the trans agenda hasn't gotten all that all that far up, so we don't have to worry yeah, about it yet. Well, when you put it that way, they seem entirely reasonable. Exactly, but I'm just saying that like. Other people are, um, there are going to be things where you do have yeah, an emotional state, but other people, some kind of, you got to make some kind of, other people are going to uh, be affected by things more than, than you are, that we should probably be able to agree on that. Right. Uh, uh, I don't. Abortion think... will affect women more than men, even if men can have a very strong statement in it. And I am super I sympathetic towards men that have strong feelings about it. I don't agree with that as I, okay. I agree with that in uh, statistically on average, but I do not agree that every single trans person mm-hmm. feels more strongly about this than I do. Probably I think, not every single I, one, but I the majority of talked, them. I believe I've talked to trans people who are less passionate about this issue and actually might even feel less impacted by it than I do. There probably are some, but if we speak in averages, because we have to, because that's how society works, is in averages, right? The average trans person is probably- that's a big leap. Well, no, we have to, because we, we can't- I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. And I think we shouldn't speak in averages. But we, ha- we can ha- have that's any- that's racist. No. To have any meaningful conversation about policy, we have to speak in averages, because we talk to whole groups of people. I don't think people. this conversation needs to be so reductive that it matches up like a politician having a meaningful conversation. Well, it's not about, about a politician. It's just we have to be able to have meaningful- we're, 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 at the sacrifice of nuance. Well, we need to be able to have a meaningful conversation about groups of people, meaning we can't talk but about but everything. But I'm talking about individuals. I don't, I don't want us, to, I don't, I don't no, agree. No, no, but even, I, I agree, I but we're talking about, are we talking nuance. about individuals or an individual? There's a difference there, right? You can't talk but about multiple individuals ever. You're only ever talking about an individual because there is no such thing as individuals. That's a group of people. That's not a, one person. It's not a group of individuals. It's, there's either a group or there's one person, right? 
between you and your girlfriend, you on average no. both have half a dick. That doesn't make any sense, right? One of you has a penis and one of you, well, I'm assuming. I think we're at, at least. Maybe you're at 0.75, okay, sure. But I'm saying that <laughs> between the two of you on average, right? You have yeah. half of a uterus. You both on average have half a penis. You both on average have half a ball sack, but that doesn't really make any sense, right? You're just confusing me by talking about my balls, but continue. You're distracting me. I'm just saying that- What are you trying to get me to do? What what I'm trying to say is that like, if we're talking about an individual, that's gonna be different than talking about groups of people. When we talk about groups of people, we have to use averages and stuff because it doesn't make sense to say, we're gonna talk about every single individual person, right? We can't do that. We have to talk about averages. That's all I'm saying. I guess I just don't think about listening that way. When I say we should listen to men about abortion, I don't mean the coalition of men. I mean, if you're in a, at a dinner party and a man starts talking about abortion, I don't think it's right to say this doesn't affect you. Shut the fuck up. But that's what happens. I agree with you. I, think, that, that, I, think, that, I think that's true. Right. So, so then when you say men don't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect men as much, um, on average, yeah. But that, my problem is that the people then use that fact as a tool to silence the individual. Sure, I agree that some people do that as well. And that when you talk I in averages- you, I feel you are doing it how, to me. You're saying, you're saying that this doesn't affect me. Well, no, no, I'm, I wasn't trying to say because that. I'm I was a, speaking- I'm a, I'm a cis person. No, no, I was speaking about society. Not you. It might be that you personally have incredibly strong feelings that you're ready to go to war for about- I am. Yeah, okay. That might be the case, in which case that's fine. But my question okay. isn't about you particularly, because I'm not as that's interested true. in talking about a society that's modeled around just you. It's about everybody, right? That's typically what we talk about. What's your question? Well, my initial point, I guess, in a very roundabout way, what I'm trying to get to is, I was just saying that generally, trans people and other marginalized groups probably feel like they have a lot more at stake in these conversations. So it's harder for them to just have a kind of blase, like, oh, well, let's just wait and see how things go. Maybe we can try this, because there's a lot more at stake for them in these conversations than for somebody like you and I, who isn't going to be determined whether or not we get like a medical treatment or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think that is used to I think the problem with a complex psychological issue, mm -hmm. it's not even, it's not even that. Like, I think that, I think there's a lot of value. Okay. So yeah, the downside to listening to people who are not in your group that shares your concerns is they might not give a shit and they might just be saying it because they don't want to deal with you. Um, and I would say that's actually true of people who advocate for your group as well. That's a problem with listening to your, your, your allies. Could be. Is that your allies have so much social pressure on them to be your allies, they might not actually be your allies. They might be placating you so they don't have to listen to you or talk to you. And with BLM, I think we both agree. Again, the allies are like when Nike changes its logo to a black square in a show of allyship, they're also dodging a bullet and trying to make some money. Sure, that could be the case. And that, that happens on an individual level as well. There okay, are yeah, that, that like, could hey, be the case. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, what about, what, just tell me what to say and I'll say it. Mm -hmm. And those, th that's not necessarily a loving or empathetic stance, even if they, the thing they're saying happens to be what you want to hear. Sure, that could be the case, yeah. It is the goddamn case. And I think that when it comes to trans people, Yes, I am asking for some trust that I am speaking from a place of genuine empathy and care and that it's not it's not a dismissal. Um, and the downside to that is, is like, yeah, you're hearing it might not be true. And I might just be saying controversial shit for money. And yeah. Yeah, I understand if, what if you're I, saying, if, and, if, and if I might even believe. Person says it, it, mm -hmm. it means more. And I might, I might actually even believe you. But then earlier in this conversation, you said that the problem, though, is that there's a lot of vitriol from the other side that doesn't feel that same way. It doesn't come from a caring place or an empathetic place. It just it comes from an incredibly hateful place. Yeah. So I think that's the scary part about how some of those conversations play out. That people aren't looking out for what's the best, more just what satisfies my desire the most. And for some of those people who are looking to satisfy their, their, their desires the most, they're not even really intimately affected by it. 
like the same way that a trans person might be, whether or not they can live in the body of their choosing or something. Yeah. Well, also, yeah. And like what trans person wants to hear a pot potentially transphobic person number nine, 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 explain their nuanced view when the other, you know, 10,000 have turned out to be, oh, you just hate trans people. Yeah. That's it's it's under. Yeah, that, I guess when I'm saying don't punch Nazis and like empathize with your your detractors or whoever you think are your detractors. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say that 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 there's it's it's understandable to want to dismiss those people especially if you f feel psychologically fragile the way many trans people r report feeling i can understand why you would want to be like no i don't want to listen to this shit mm -hmm. um but i guess i just mean i to the extent that you can tolerate hearing out like a white supremacist explain why you need to be in a concentration camp it's not you know or dead it's not the most pleasant thing to listen to, but I think that that is our only path forward out of um, extreme polarization. Sure, and I I generally agree because I'm a really big free speech guy. I am, I'm, I'm also a very, very big free speech guy. Um, I've heard that about you. Yeah. Um, Your reputation precedes you. Thank you, yes. But, yeah. um, and this is something that conservatives always seem to miss, and it really triggers the fuck out of me. Not saying you're a conservative, by the way, but but for people that tend to advocate for free speech, is um, uh, to quote the, um, <clears throat> the philosopher Uncle Ben, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And it seems like people want sometimes all of the um, privilege of freedom of speech, but they won't take a look at the cost sometimes. And free speech, you must acknowledge, it does have great costs. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't... I don't I don't like I am I am conservative on this issue. Huh? Well conservatives don't respect like freedom of the press in my opinion. Some, yeah, so, it seems like it, yeah. I so that's my that's mm -hmm. my main gripe with them yeah. on free speech. But I, I I don't I think it is chilling free speech. Mm -hmm. I don't even like the word responsibility. Well when I say I responsibility, what I mean is there is there is a cause. like here's something, right? The NSA and the CIA could probably prevent 100% of terrorist attacks if we let them tap every single device and give them unlimited access to information. But the theoretically, theoret yeah, they probably could. But that's not a trade off. It's not one I'm willing to make. I'm guessing it's probably not one that you're willing to make. We accept that like we're going to have some trouble in society. Freedom and security. Yeah, but we, we yeah. that's a cost of the freedom of speech that we have. That's just part of the game. That's but, but we accept that. Um, okay, so you're not mm -hmm. saying that you're not saying the response when you say you should use your free speech responsibly, you're saying that from a moral perspective. Oh no, I'm not, not even saying a... I'm not even saying you should use it responsibly. You can be crazy with it, but at the very least, you must acknowledge that there are some harms that come about as a result of that. Um, of talking, yeah, I think could talking be, yeah. can be hard. Yeah, and, the, and the issue I have is that just like how on the left, sometimes people can say everything is all, you know, um, daisies and rainbows. For instance, like when it comes to abortions, people on the left don't ever talk enough about how hard it is to have an abortion. It's one of the reasons, it's one of the biggest reasons why people that are pro-choice become pro-life is because they have an abortion. And then when they go online, they see a bunch of dipshit women who've never been pregnant in their lives talk about how great abortion is. And they've just had an incredibly fucking traumatic experience. And then they're like, this is actually horrible. I'm pro-life now. This is, I don't ever want anybody to experience this. But on the flip no, side- no, no room for bad feelings. Yeah. On the flip side, conservatives will say things where they're like, or remember how earlier you're like, nobody can accept it. Like being fat is bad. You know, you want to over accommodate everything. I feel like conservatives do it a little bit too when it comes to free speech. No, there's no downside to free speech. It's awesome. Everything is great. It's like, well, no, there are actually some people that can be harmed by things, some bad ideas, some bad movements, some bad things can come out of freedom of speech. But we have to accept that those are the trade offs that, like, well, we want freedom of speech, but there's going to be some harm caused by it. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. So all I would ask for, and I don't, I'm not even, this isn't like necessarily super directed at you because it seems like you kind of understand. So like, um, it, you have to acknowledge, I'm using you in the general form, not you personally, but like, I think it has to be acknowledged that like conversations relating to somebody's existence or their access to like medical care is always going to be a far more like intimately effective or a conversation that affects them more than an external party having it where you don't actually have that same incredibly, um, intimate experience with that thing right yes okay yeah that's all i'm saying i agree with that but i th all, i think that can also give people a better perspective which part of that or what do you mean 
Oh, to hear like, like an outside person's like their perspective. Like if I'm going to have a midlife crisis and spend all my money on NFTs, uh -huh. having somebody who doesn't know what an NFT even is at the beginning of the conversation talk to me about it could actually be more beneficial than having somebody who is also super affected by NFTs. It's possible. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying that it's not, I don't think that inherently means that uh, an outsider's opinion is worthless. Is yeah, I, well, it just, it just, it's just different. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But sometimes having the internal perspective is sometimes more important. Generally, it's more valuable, right? Because I think what's particularly annoying about the way I talk about trans people is that I do keep mentioning my emotional experience because I, it is a strong one and mm -hmm. I actually do really care emotionally. Mm -hmm. Which is about fine. Trans you can, people, yeah, but I'm also about my own life like i do feel really horrified by the what i see the political steamrolling of various like f f academic fields that freaks me out and um it scares me seeing a future where uh placation of everyone becomes the norm and like there's no place for me that i i do feel constricted by it and yes it is broader and it's not it's not entering mm -hmm. my doctor's office but um, it does affect me, sure. and I don't. I don't think that should be discounted. I agree. I think that's fair. You're just saying it should be noted that I it doesn't yeah. affect me as much or as immediately. Or at the very matters. least, note the effects of the other side. If you don't want to weigh them, at least understand that while you're having a conversation about your personal comfort or discomfort in living in a certain society, the other person is having a conversation about like their medical future. That at the very least, that's yeah. what's at stake for them. Yeah. I think. I think that if I'm talking to a trans person, I'm mm -hmm. definitely not going to talk about it the same way I'm talking about it with you because of because of what you said. I agree sure. that a certain awareness and sensitivity needs to be brought into the conversation when you're talking about whatever mm -hmm. and any topic with with the marginalized person that the topic affects sure yeah sure. i think sure okay yeah um well anything else <laughs> um I don't think so. Do you? Um, I don't think so. Well, do you want to shout out your channel? <laughs> Mr. Girl. Okay. What do you normally do on your channel? Um, I just released a rap album. A rap album? Yeah. Wow. So I made the cuties review and everybody called me a pedophile. Then I made a music video called I'm a pedophile, which was a parody of Eminem's I'm a, a criminal. Okay. And then I was, and then everybody was like, oh, you should, this is like weird Al. This is funny and blah. And I was like, fuck you. So then I made a real rap song that I just wrote myself. And then people were like, oh my God, this is awesome. And then I made a whole rap album. But simultaneously to this, I was making videos about gender and videos about uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, just like kind of political essays. And um, now I'm working on a video about Stone Toss's NFT release. Oh, God. Do you hate NFTs I, or do you love NFTs? I'm starting to hate them. The more every for every invite, every time I get invited to a new NFT discord, uh -huh. I hate them a little more. Why do you hate them so much? the extreme um, opportunity for market manipulation and dishonesty and lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. I, I, what I've come to is the people who love NFTs, like the libertarians who love NFTs and who hate communism, mm -hmm. ironically, are relying on the goodwill and good intentions and morality of their fellow man. When um, you, we, who, who knows who's bought a bored ape? Maybe no one has ever bought a board eight. How much does it cost to give the appearance of buying a board eight? Mm -hmm. 50 bucks. Sure. Have you so ever heard you of have... the term like painting the tape? No. Um, a long time ago, um, when stocks were traded, there was um, a little ticker uh, or there was a printer that actually like printed out every time a new trade happened. And yeah. to give the illusion, there's a lot of activity around a stock. You might buy and sell it or trade it between two people over and over again. And that expression is you're painting the tape and it's what okay. you're spending. Yeah. So when you have somebody buying something a lot to generate like a false interest about it and stuff like that. So yeah. with, with NFTs, mm -hmm. with anonymous wallets, you can draw the price history graph 
However, to look like whatever you want, and it only costs the gas fees to draw a dot. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of money and influence, or you have a lot of money to launder anyway, you could just buy 3,000 board apes from yourself, and then you have the apes and the money. Like, so people have to be doing this. Yeah. I don't know who. I don't know where. I don't know how to figure it out. Mm-hmm. But I really want to. What I'm coming to is that it has to be some sort of statistical pattern that arises, some mistake, or um, an insider mm -hmm. who is going to talk to me about it. So I've interviewed Stone Toss. Uh, I'm convinced that if there's any funny business going on with his NFT, which sold two million dollars worth in 20 minutes, Jesus, he's got 200,000 followers. The guy ain't that famous. Mm -hmm. I don't get it and but maybe I, but i also am just maybe i'm naive so maybe he, maybe it's true i don't know i want to figure it out i i'm convinced that if there is any funny business going on he doesn't know about it okay um he was approached by a team that does nft releases and i've i've been approached by somebody who does nft releases to ask me if i want to make an nft and that we didn't get to the business part because i was like i got uncomfortable but I've seen m multiple artists tweeting out, hey, stop asking me if I want to do NFT projects. It seems that there are groups of people going around to artists or YouTubers with like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe this has happened to you. Um, I'm sure it has. People have to be approaching you. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah. I did a sponsorship once for a site called eternal.gg. That was a fun one. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I get a lot of like personal emails, but um yeah people, like do you yeah. want to do an nft project yeah you but keep, yeah we'll do, do all the development and mm -hmm. then you give us some percentage of the money right? yeah yeah basically yeah. or like sites where it's like we've already got like a thing reserved with your name and you just have to claim this and then you can do this yeah and, yeah, yeah right mm -hmm. free money so at the end of the stone toss release the the wallet that was collecting all the money paid out a million to one wallet and a third of a million to three other wallets mm -hmm. and i was like okay so is that your development team and he said i don't want to answer that Okay. Then he cashed out the wallet. The, the big wallet sat mm -hmm. um, in Ethereum for two weeks. He cashed out that, I assume Stone Toss cashed out that wallet. And then the same day was in a Twitter space in public listening to advice about paying taxes on your NFTs. Okay. So I have to assume that's him. And then that, that I have a high degree of confidence, but can't say for sure that, that the developers got the other half. So like, I... I don't like NFTs because nobody knows what the fuck is going on. It's easy to lie to people. And mm -hmm. if you can lie to people, you will lie to people. Mm -hmm. and I don't understand how these people square that with, well, communism doesn't work because people are too corrupt. But NFTs, when you could draw the price graph for 50 bucks a point, mm -hmm. these are this is a solid investment. It just, it just, until the technology is being used for something that makes more sense, it just feels, and not even by design, I don't, I don't, I'm sure lots of people aren't even trying to be evil. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a pyramid scheme though. I just in its, in its structure and, and in what I think is going to happen yeah. at the end. It feels like, like there might be some cool utilities for NFTs, but right now yeah. everybody's just trying to like buy and sell and like trade scam each other. They're saying like, oh, if you buy this, you'll become rich. Or if you do this, like you could sell this in the future. Yeah. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with and that. It's just fucking, it's, it's just. The people who you are talking into buying these NFTs are not rich. Mm -hmm. And the people talking them into it are. Yeah. Like so watching like watching watching um Logan Paul and Mr. Beast talk about crypto punks and like they talk they, they like told the story about this call where this like guy had all these billionaires on the call and was like, No, seriously, you gotta buy them and like he convinced them all to buy like five or ten each. And they're like, yo, they did pretty well. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they did well. And then you sold them. That's mm -hmm. a pump and dump. Mm -hmm. It just. Do you feel then, the same then, way about, I'm curious. Do you feel the same way about cryptocurrency in general? Yes, mm -hmm. except crypto. I feel the same way more about um, it, crypto, like not Bitcoin as a whole, but when mm -hmm. someone starts a new cryptocurrency. Yeah, the rug right? pulls, the new crypto. The rug pulls, show, yeah. because cause you can't. You have to have a lot of money now to manipulate the entire like Bitcoin like to do Bitcoin, place. Ethereum, any of the big coins is going to be a lot more difficult. Yeah, exactly. But an NFT, you, it feels like it's Ethereum, but it's not because it's on the Ethereum it's, chain. It's so, on the Ethereum chain, but yeah. it's it's not. It's yeah. a new currency with 
with limited tokens is entirely under the control of one person who may or may not have enough money to dictate the price that you see when you want to buy it. Mm -hmm. And and what makes all this worse is that almost all of this, every every purchase of an NFT usually involves one or more parasocial relationships that the audience member has mm -hmm. with streamers or creators who they believe that they know, they believe that they love, they believe that they can trust, they believe is looking out for their best interest, looking them in the eye and telling them, I think this is really going to blow up. Yeah, this sure. is what's best for you. Mm -hmm. You really should do this. Uh, it feels it feels very wrong. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. And then, so and then none of the, the people buying it or any of the people really, even the people selling it don't even really know what an NFT is. Like if you ask them, like... No. Yeah. No. It's a, it's a receipt with possible other things written into it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the arguments of like, um, who, why, why would anybody buy it? Like I, I get, I get that digital collecting can be cool and it's a cool idea and that it could have utility, mm -hmm. but there's so much room for fraud and manipulation that you might think it's cool. But all the things that you see that made you think it was cool, that made you think other people think it was cool, mm -hmm. could all be entirely fabricated. You might be the only person on earth who has ever genuinely bought an NFT, and you have no way to know <laughs> yeah. that unless you personally know somebody else mm -hmm. who has done it. And that, that's freaky. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's I'm working on that now. That's uh, Damn. Like, a, it's a, like a detective movie. Well. Thank you. Know, Good luck with that one. Thanks. Be careful. Stay safe. I've got to chat with another guy coming up, so I need to abandon you. Okay. I understand. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for the conversation. I appreciate it, man. Take care. Have a good one. You too. Wow, what a guy. Okay, I know that the service is talking to a dude, but I'm supposed to talk to Mr. Beard. Oh, so I have to do this.